Good morning, everybody. Welcome to uh, the City of Morro Bay Tourism Business Improvement District special meeting. Today is Thursday, December 10th. Uh, we are at the Vets Hall. It, for the record, it is 8.06 a.m. And I will call the meeting to order. Currently, we have with us um, Aaron Graves, Joan Solu, myself, Michelle Hawkes, and Todd Gray? Baston. Okay, sorry. I first one. Um, and um, <laughs> I should have asked before I got live. And um, Taylor Newton is not in attendance right now. He is running late. And Jane Beeman will not be at this meeting as well. She is out of town. Um, and then we're missing one more board member. So that is our call, our quorum we've established. And I'll go ahead and open it up to public comment. Do we have anybody in the room for public comment? <laughs> well, that's my mic. Like. My name is Homer Alexander, but before I start, aren't you going to go through the agenda items before you get to item number four and ask for public comment prior to the discussion of item four? Yeah, I can In other do words, that. Yeah. with the idea that maybe Mr. Newton would Get here in time. We'll yes. Get here in time to hear the entire public comment since I'm sure it'll be important. Yes. Thank yeah, you. we can definitely do that. There is um, approval of minutes, which we'll move to, and then we'll move to um, item four. So that being said, I'll go ahead and um, is there anybody else that wants just public comment on general? Okay. General public comment. I'm going to go ahead and close general public comment, seeing that there's nobody here to come to the podium. And then I will move us over to approval of the minutes. Has the board had an opportunity to read through the minutes from the November 19th um, advisory board? That was our special meeting over at the community center. Hopefully everybody's had a chance to um, read through those minutes. Mm -hmm. And I'll look for a motion. I would move to accept the minutes from the previous meeting on November 19th. I got to get into the gig here. Uh, I'll, second that. <laughs> I'll second that motion. Okay, all in, um, or any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? None. Okay, motion carries 4-0. Unrelated to any uh, issue in the minutes, I'd just like to say that it's nice to have the item linked to the actual time in the film so that if you have a question, you can go back and actually look at it. You know, previously... You know, you'd have to go find it on slow span and whatnot and watch through the whole thing and try and move the little ticker back and forth so you could understand what was said if you had a question on the minutes. And now it's like, boom, you just, you know, you get there. So I appreciate that. Just, although this is my second to the last meeting, it did make checking the minutes easier. So thank you. Um, that's something I've noticed just informational while we're on the topic, that the city's doing the same thing. And that's really a great thing. You can YouTube things and get on and see things to that thing. So it's really cool to see it across the board for all advisory boards and for the city also. So on the topic, then, who do we thank for doing that logistically? That'd be Brooke and Dana, the city clerk's office. City that clerk's Brooke, office, yeah. Brooke and Dana. Well, thank you both, Brooke and Dana, for doing that. It probably takes a lot of work to go through and, and line those things up, but it did make it quite helpful. Yep. Okay, so now we're moving on to item four. Discussion and direction to city council regarding city tourism, marketing, and promotions management. Um, should I go ahead then and... So I can present first. Okay. Try to go slowly. <laughs> See if I appreciate we can get Sailor Sam. here. Thank you everyone for being here today and taking time out of your schedule to, to do this. So... Uh, We've had a lot of discussions, and I hope the staff report was pretty clear today. We're trying to be very focused on, on this topic. Um, and so I'll lay out for you first kind of what the, the hope is, and, and then I'll lay out the resolution, and we'll go from there. So there's kind of three main options today. It doesn't mean that you're stuck on those, but the three main ones are, um, as, you, as you've looked at the resolution, um, let me back up. The city council obviously has asked us to provide an alternative management model, and so that's what we've done, and they've asked us to describe via resolution what it would look like and, and all that. So that, that's what we're bringing to them. We want to make sure that the advisory board has the opportunity to take a look at that and have a say. And so based on that, your options today are you can approve what staff has recommended. You can recommend that the city council not go with this proposal, um, or you can 
come up with another recommendation, either modify this however you would like or, or do something else. I, so I guess that's four, technically. Um, so with that, I'll go through kind of what we've put out here. And it's pretty much obviously similar to what we already had in the last staff report, the bullet points. And there are some, um, there's a, probably one major change and I'll make sure I highlight that so, so it's clear. Um, but I'll go through each of these points briefly. Um, the city will directly manage its own tourism promotions and marketing, including expenditure of uh, TBIT assessment funds. Uh, it's important to note, and so we wanted to put that in here, that expenditures will be made pursuant to city and state law. So we, we have Chapter 3.6 of the Morrow Bay Municipal Code that outlines uh, the TBIT and how we both generate and use the funds for this. Um, our TBID um, expenditures are very well regulated, or I would say pretty locked in for the city. Um, there's only three ways you can use it, and it's very clear. Um, those expenditures absolutely must go to benefit the hotelier community. It's very clear also in the code that it states that, and so that all remains. This resolution doesn't modify any of that. This resolution commits us to ensuring that we continue to follow those rules. The, uh, in terms of state law, there's a state required annual report that outlines you know, how you're doing and also how you're going to expend the funds as well. And so we'll continue to do that. Um, it says that the, the TBIT Advisory Board recommends the annual report and is approved by the City Council. This is how it's already been done and is, is being done. The, um, the resolution as I had provided it to you, and I'm going to go over a, a this is a minor change, but um, one that was pro provided to me based on feedback from um, board member Solu, um, that expert tourism staff reporting the city manager or their designee, we've changed it to expert tourism professionals. We want to make sure it's clear because these are going to be contracted folks. We actually will use the city's consultant agreement for that. Um, so we've changed it to expert tourism professionals reporting to the city manager or their designee will manage the city's tourism promotions and marketing. They will be contractors and will be required to follow all rules related to contracted services. Um, the existing staff it will be offered these positions and we want to be clear that we're not saying that they will accept those positions, but um, we have a wonderful staff and we absolutely hope that we will just re retain a strong amount of continuity through this transition were it to occur. Um, this is the part that I, is, I would say major, and I definitely want your feedback on it, and I'll tell you why I did it. Um, it says, the city may modify this contractor relationship in the future should there be a more cost-effective approach to a management of tourism marketing promotions. Changes shall be reviewed by the TBIT Advisory Board, which will make a recommendation to the City Council prior to operational changes. So, Sorry, excuse me. Yes. As you go along in the document, can you just tell us which number you're on? Item two. Two, okay, yep. great, thank you. So the reason why I put that in, obviously, is because in the business world, you like flexibility, you like to be nimble, and when we put out documents like this, it does lock us into stuff. So I'm trying to be mindful of the long term. It, having the ability to be flexible should, for some reason, there be a change in the law that makes it less cost effective to go through this type of relationship, or if there's a new type of relationship created by state or federal law that may be more cost effective, we can review that with you. You can give us feedback and see if that's worth, worthy of implementation. So that's why I put that in there. Um, Excuse me, did you change the language in that or you kept the language the same? So the reason why I'm pointing it out is because on the last staff report from mm -hmm. the last meeting, mm -hmm. that portion of it was not in there. Right. And so as I wrote the, re I hadn't brought you a resolution last time. I took those bullet points from the last one and I wrote the resolution out. And this is, since this is like the final document, I had more time to sit down and say, okay, this is going to be adopted. How's it going to look? And so I, I added that. I want to make sure it's really clear. If you don't like it, let me know, make a motion, all that. Um, the TBID advisory board, this is number three. The TBID advisory board shall participate in the annual review of the city's tourism manager and will assist in setting goals and metrics to measure the success of community tourism promotions and marketing. The advisory board shall participate in the selection of any future tourism manager hiring process. Um, we also modified the sentence there instead of saying contracted employee to say contracted professional to make sure it's clear again that these are contractors and not official employees of the city. And um, this item three came directly really from, I think, feedback we received from the hotelier community about the ability to really make sure you guys continue to have input on the person who's doing this work on our behalf. 
and um, we fully agree that we want to make sure that the TB advisory board is very has a very healthy ability to review this with us and give you, us your feedback on on this and how they're doing. Item number four. Um, this one is related to kind of enhancing the duties of the board, <laughs> although. Uh, <laughs> Board member Solo reminded me yesterday that this could just mean more work. Um, I prefer to look at it in the positive, that uh, I'm trying to give you more power over things. <laughs> so there's nothing specifically that says that you will do in this section. It says that um, it could include citywide brand management, destination promotion, community event management or review, and more, and that the advisory board shall assist staff in developing the overall duties of the board and will make a recommendation to council. And, and my hope is that we actually give this board um, more say and input over the destination itself of Morrow Bay, not just the marketing of it um, in terms of print material, TV commercials, you know, all that. Let's actually talk about the de specific destination that is Morrow Bay and give, help you give us input on that. I think that's just important. It all goes together. Um, number five. The city shall commit $300,000 in transient occupancy taxes to the city's tourism operations. It is intended that the budget shall provide for this amount incrementally, with 20% of annual TOT increases being set aside for these purposes until the maximum is reached. The TBIT Advisory Board will provide recommendations through its annual report and work plan on the appropriate expenditure of this funding to City Council. This is obviously new funding being proposed by city staff to make sure that it's clear the city has a commitment to our most important economic engine. Uh, based on obviously the 8% projection we put in last time, and obviously that was just a projection, I think the hotelier community thinks we're going to increase year over year more than that. Um, that 8% gets you, it's five years to get to the $300,000. If, if the increases annually are more than that, you're going to get to the $300,000 faster. Um, I, I have had discussions with board members and others about um, can we simply not tie it to the 20% annual increase? Can we just put that in? Um, I did speak to the city manager about that, and um, I think we had a good conversation about it, and I think um, I'll just be honest. I think the concern is that we're not sure if the city council would feel comfortable with that, and so we left the recommendation in here as is. Um, but that does not mean that if you would like to make a modification or a different recommendation, you're free to do so. But uh, when we're trying to think tactically about putting this all together and getting it in front of council and making it palatable, I think we feel like this would be successful in front of them. Um, number six, the city's professional tourism staff shall be provided office space in a city facility. And actually, I probably would recommend that that be changed to shall be offered office space because they are con contractors. We actually cannot require require where they work. Um, it's up to them where they work. And um, I think it would be cost effective for them if they chose to maybe utilize that space. If they don't utilize that space, then we have it for other things that we could use it for. We have plenty of things we could use that office space for. Number seven, in order to focus as much of the TBIT assessment as possible on directly promoting and marketing Royal Bay, the city shall provide for accounting, legal advice, IT support, as well as aforementioned office space. Um, simply making sure it's clear that the city is going to be providing this outside of the TBIT assessment funds. We don't. We want to make sure that we're cutting down on the administrative expenditures uh, occurring now, and we we can do that. I think right now it's about 20 grand. I think we had said 20 or 30 grand before, but that's a, a it's a savings that can go back into further promotions and marketing. In order to transition direct management of tourism operations, the city does not intend to extend its contract with the Tourism Bureau past May 2016 expiration. The city will coordinate a transition plan to direct management with Bureau input. And uh, previously, I think the bullet point in the last staff report just said, we'll help you wind down. There was, a, I think, concern from at least one board member that we didn't want to leave the Tourism Bureau in existence if this, if this model were to be implemented. And so the last time it basically just said, we'll help you kill the Bureau. And I think we put it in a more diplomatic way here and said that we'll continue to work with you on um, a healthy transition away. Board Member Solo, you're scowling. Do you have a question or a concern? You, you were scowling. You, look, you looked like you had a question. Oh, no, I'm not scowling. <laughs> That's an interesting term, but no, I'm not scowling. Thank you. All right. Uh, I'm, um, no, I was just thinking. Quizzical. You looked quizzical is a better word. I was, yeah. And so I just want to make sure I can answer any questions you have on that. On that not yet. Okay. I'll let you know, though. Thank you. I'll try not to scowl at you. <laughs> can be quizzical at me. 
the number nine, the city shall work, and this is based on input from board members solo, the city shall work with the local business community on the formation of an additional business improvement district that could include retail and restaurant businesses for the purpose of enhanced marketing of those businesses that help make Morrow Bay the destination that it is. Consideration shall occur by December 31st, 2018. Um, and I agree that she, uh, she felt that it would be important to put a timeline on this, make sure we have a, an actual specific commitment to doing this, and I, I like that. I think two years is ample. The reason why it was written more generally before was I wanted to make sure we had ample opportunity for outreach and education and to kind of mount a fact-based information campaign about this before we go to a vote of the council on implementation. So um, I think two years is ample enough time to do that. Um, and it gives us a, a strong timeline to make sure we're held accountable in, in making it work. So with that, that's, that's the um, resolution. It's pretty... I'm sorry, Sam. Just yes, to sir. clarify there, you said December 31st, 2018, so Correct. three years? Because really at the end of 18. Sure, yes. Okay. Correct. So um, it's pretty similar to what obviously came in the last staff report. We didn't get a lot of input on it last time, and that was why I didn't make a lot of modifications. I, was, I didn't want to make assumptions about what I heard last time, so I left it as is. Um, based on feedback I've already received, I'll be honest, I think that the vote here today is no. Um, in the interest of expediency, if you have an alternative, I think it would be best to put that on the floor, make a motion, and, and consider it, and have a discussion about that. Um, just to be honest, like why, let's not beat around the bush. Um, <laughs> I think it's, it's more productive for us just to do what you guys want to do, and we'll bring that to council. Um, I want to make sure it's clear, though, staff will still bring this, but if you have a different recommendation, we're absolutely going to bring it to them, and they're going to have a discussion about all of it. And so that's, that's the process, and I think it's going to work out really well. We'll have a great community conversation. Okay. So thank you, Sam, for the staff report. Um, open, I will now open it up to public comment. And any, anybody in the public that's wishing to come up, please state your name. And um, I know. My name is Homer Alexander. <clears throat> Prior to the Tourism Bureau being formed, the previous city attorney asked me to research the structure of T-bids in California and submit a report to him. I contacted 15 from a list that John Lambeth provided based on their budgets. All 15 were independent. At your last meeting, when the deputy city manager was reviewing the staff report, he stated in response to concerns about additional costs, expert staff would be contracted, not direct employees of the city. Since you are all employers, you know it is illegal for an individual to be classified as a contractor unless he or she owns or is employed by a standalone business entity with multiple customers. In my opinion, it is very unlikely that an individual who is employed elsewhere is going to want to establish an LLC, attract additional customers, and go through the expense and all the other hassles of starting a company. Therefore, there is a strong possibility that an advertising agency will end up being engaged to conduct the day-to-day -day tourism marketing efforts. Because I was interested in comparing the two different models that are being debated today, I, looked at, I took the time to research the history of the financial performance of the lodging industry in Morro Bay. In the 10 years prior to the formation of the Independent Tourism Bureau, lodging revenue grew from 17 million to 20 million, or an increase of $3 million. In those 10 years, the lodging industry used the model that the city is currently proposing to manage tourism marketing. A volunteer board managing a contract with an advertising agency with the city staff in the middle. The agency's uh, overhead charges reduced available dollars for marketing. Opportunities were lost because the decision-making process was cumbersome. In 2011, the lodging industry, along with the city leaders, agreed to change had to be made. After several meetings with stakeholders and members of the community, it became apparent that the key to success would be to hire a professional who would work exclusively for an independent board of directors with 100% of his or her time focused on increasing tourism in Morro Bay. In the three years since the Bureau was formed, lodging revenue increased from 20 million to 29 million, 
a $9 million increase in just three years. I'm going to repeat those numbers. $3 million in 10 years in the old model, $9 million in three years in the current model. Obviously, there are other factors besides the efforts of the Director of Tourism and the Independent T-Bid Board that help create this dynamic increase. But even so, when you compare it to the old model, there's no comparison. I encourage you to vote against the proposed resolution. You would send a powerful message to the City Council if the vote was unanimous. Some of you might be thinking, why is this guy up here talking when he doesn't have any skin in the game? But I do, and so do a lot of other people. There is no question in my mind that once the city takes over the destination marketing efforts, it will become less efficient and less effective. Those inefficiencies will lead to slower growth in TOT revenue. Because TOT has become such an important part of the city general fund revenue, flat or lower TOT will result in reduced city services, services that I count on. Thank you. Thank you, Homer. Anybody else for further public comment? Good morning. Uh, I'm Chuck Davison. I'm the president and CEO of Visit San Luis Obispo County. Um, so I, I, I do want to say I do believe that the city of Morro Bay has tourism in their best interest, and they're making their best efforts on this. So I, I want to start by contributing that. I also want to say that in a conversation I had last night with the appointed board member for our group, uh, Val Seymour from Morro Bay, um, I, I reminded Val that the city legally has every ability to do what they are proposing. And I think that's an important part of the conversation. And so the comments I'm about to make are under the auspice that the city is going to move in this direction one way or another, regardless of the input from the advisory board. That, that's, that's the way we're seeing it. When we originally um, spoke to this group and also to the city uh, at the planning meeting you had several months ago, we balanced our recommendation based on one firm request. And that is if the city went in this direction, that the individual who was working for tourism was a full-time staff member. Us at Visit San Luis Obispo County, more than any other um, organization in San Luis Obispo County, works intimately with each of the CVBs throughout the market. And so we understand all the different models that exist, whether it's a full-time staff member in Pismo or a contract in Paso or Tascadero. And what we would suggest to you is that um, in the contractor model, as, as that contractor can change on an annual basis, it's less likely that a full-time staff member is going to change. The ability to move the initiatives forward, the ability to work strategically towards a long-term plan are much more viable under a full-time staff member. Um, in addition to a, a follow-up to, to the comments made by the gentleman who spoke in front of me, um, we also find that when it's a contractor, and their time and effort is diluted on other items, their ability to solely focus on the initiatives of one organization become extremely difficult. And as a contractor, you can't prohibit them from working on other items. I would also remind this group that when we were in front of you for your approval for the T-bid, which ultimately at the beginning we didn't get and received in the end, right, um, for the countywide, this group made the comment that if the TMD was going to be approved, it needed to move from the former contractor model, which existed before my tenure at the organization, to a full-time staff model so that that full-time staff member was totally devoted to the initiatives of tourism for the county. So again, I, I just want to make the recommendation to this group and also to the city that they, because I believe that they believe in tourism and I believe that they believe in the initiative and the value that tourism is creating for this destination, but if they believe in it, and those funds are already being used from this organization to fund a full-time team member, they should be able to do it under the new auspice as well. Thank you. Jack, can you Mr. Around? Davidson, may I ask you a question? May I ask, may I ask him a question? Yes. yes. May I ask? Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, under, under your full-time staff model that you have right now, yes. the full-time staff model is employed under a destination marketing 
Absolutely. So, we're, so we're, we are a nonprofit, right? And so our nonprofit is allowed to establish an individual as a full-time, you know, team member. And so, yes, that was one of the requirements when I took the full-time position is I gave up my LLC, my, mm-hmm. my contracting company, mm-hmm. and I gave up those other businesses that I was doing work for. And I came and devoted my time wholly to this effort uh, that we are working on for the county on your behalf. So I just want to be clear. The County of San Luis Obispo. No, the nonprofit organization of San Luis Obispo County Visitors and Conference Bureau, DBA, visit San Luis Obispo County, is the employer of myself and the team. Correct. But what my question is the County of San Luis Obispo has a contract with a destination marketing organization that employs you and your staff. The County of San Luis Obispo has a contract with a nonprofit 501c6, which is our organization, which is the management group for the Tourism Marketing District. Correct. Great. Terrific setup. Thank you. Thank you, Chuck. <laughs> Dee Dee Alexander. Um, Mr. Taylor, I hope that you heard that both public speakers stated the need for full-time staff dedicated to promoting Mara Bay. Thank you, Katie. What? Oh, Dee Dee, sorry. Okay, any further public comment? Okay, seeing none, I'm going to go ahead and close public comment and move us on. Um... Okay, so what we've got before us, we all know we've kind of beaten this. Basically, we have this resolution in front of us. Um, Before I move on to doing the resolution, I'd like to read, Jane Beeman is not here. Jane Beeman has written a letter to the TBID staff. She sent it to all city council, to the city manager, and to the deputy. So I'm going to go ahead and read that, and this is from Jane Beeman. And just to be clear, I actually didn't receive it, so I'm glad that you got it. Okay. Yeah. So I am reading this into the record for Jane Beeman. Um, Okay. Dear TBID Board, City Manager, Assistant City Manager, Council. It was my intention to attend this important meeting, but family emergency pulled me away. Please accept this letter as my input regarding the city managing TBID funds in a more active management role. I have taken the time to pull three hoteliers regarding this proposal. Ken of the Astero Inn, Nick of the Rockview Hotel, and Val at Front Street Inn. With my input, we collectively represent approximately 50 rooms. It is a great concern of ours that the proposed plan has been drafted by staff, is a work by individuals that do not have the experience, past or present, in the business of tourism, and that because the city is concerned over its plan to increase its general operating budget, that IT is looking at the TBID funds to help fund items that the city might consider tourism-related such as a request to use TBID funds to pay for a feasibility study that was not a direct promotion to increase tourism, tra- tourism trade, was asked of Sam, and rejected by Sam after review. Thank you, Sam. Bottom line, there is a trust issue. At the same time, the communication between the city and the oversight... Sorry, I moved too quick. At the same time, the communication between the city and the overnight stay options desperately need to be repaired, and trust needs to be rebuilt. By working together in a partnership, utilizing city resources at costs that will reduce TBID's current outlays, will result in a more available will result in more available for marketing. We must be able to establish and structure a budget jointly with specific spending item transfer limits and joint accountability. There must be a quarterly budget expense review structure, and by working together, the city will become tourism educated. The common goal must be to grow tourism. The fact remains that the city has not acted in a way that would suggest that it is willing to promote tourism. To date, there is no concrete effort by the city to establish a BID that would require all overnight stays to help contribute to fund tourism marketing. To date, there is no concrete effort by the city to establish a BID that would require tourism-related businesses to help to fund tourism marketing. Fact is, the city has reduced its financial support for tourism, cutting funds continuously over the past years. The city's proposed operating budget does not have a provision for any funds towards tourism. This act demonstrates the unwillingness of the city to embrace a mutual working partnership between its tourism businesses and the city. The proposal to work together towards the common goal to promote tourism is a noble and attainable goal over time. Time is the key word here. Commitment is another key word. The hotels have committed upwards of $800,000 in the efforts towards raising funds for the city's general funds. 
a huge success on the part of the hotels and the Tourism Bureau, as the city has enjoyed a contribution of over 30% of its general fund through TOT growth and increase from sales tax related to tourism businesses. The financial commitment by the hotels is 3% on every dollar. There is no financial commitment by the city. The act by the city to underfund the visitor center destroyed continuity and demonstrated how the city does not support tourism. This change has a proven negative impact by reduced visitor traffic. Plus, the new location is inadequate for its function and what it looks like compared to what it was, this move was a huge step down. My background is, my background is business and it is just so happens right now it's the hotel business. I have been self-employed for over 40 years. Since taking over the management, accounting, and marketing of this hotel, its income has grown over 200%. It is my financial responsibility to make the income that will pay its expenses and put food on my employees' tables. Meaning no disrespect, our city management and council members, for the most part, do not have this self-employment experience or personal financial burden. For my endeavors, I do not collect a paycheck. The city's written plan proposes a drastic and immediate change in the working structure of the tourism funds and a new reporting structure does not necessarily equate to success. It is the theory. It is a theory. The plan may not even be feasible and none of the parties to the plan can afford its failure. But this proposed change may be a jumpstart to open discussions by all parties and to repair the communication as mentioned earlier. Change for the better can benefit us all. I propose that we take the time to work together to come up with a solution to all concerned. Start with a baby step, but give it a year. Set up a small task force that is compromised of city staff and hotel representatives and meet on a regular basis to come up with budgets, structure, accountability, etc. And we'll call to actions to implement over the next 12 months. Time not only builds trust, it allows participants to become educated, build communication, and set achievable and attainable goals. Put in writing how the city will financially support tourism efforts. I would be happy to serve on this task force. Today, as a TBIT advisory board member appointed by council, I recommend against the plan as proposed, but in time and with input, I am sure collectively we can develop a plan that will benefit all parties concerned. Require the task force to be established with the goal for an acceptable plan to be in place within 12 months. Respectfully submitted, Jane Beeman, TBID Advisory Board Member. So that was Jane's um, letter to council and to the full board. So I'll go ahead and we've got that filed for record. Everybody, I'm sure, heard that. And then I think... Um, I think, like Mr. Sam, um, Sam had stated, um, it's probably best we kind of, I'd like to, does everybody want to discuss first, or do we want to kind of go with a, a stroll poll, poll of where we're at on the resolution? Uh, can we ask staff questions first on his yeah, report? exactly. Great idea. Okay. So I'll start at your end. Aaron, any questions for Sam? Sam, direct question towards you as brought up by the audience out there. And thank you for your public comment. And actually, I'd like to make one quick note here. Uh, Mr. Alexander, you said about you don't feel like you have skin in the game. I feel like decisions like this, every citizen of Morave has skin in this game. It is our primary economic engine. And it's great to have people like yourselves coming out and giving public comment on this. Um, Regarding the question of some con this subcontractor, um, you and I have had conversations about this as well. Mr. Davison brought up some very good points regarding that, about the subcontractor not being an employee, which we do realize the overhead would be substantially less. I love that model, if possible. A lot of us have expressed reservations about the actual execution of that. How is that possible to have the subcontractor be full-time focused on Morro Bay? I mean, it almost seems like um, it's creating uh, a no a no win situation so Not doable as a contractor they wouldn't we cannot control their work so heavily that they could only focus on Morrow Bay that's absolutely correct um, obviously we recommended the the contracted model because we heard concerns from the hoteliers that you didn't want full-time staff it would be too expensive if they were government staff and that was the point the board member solo was making with mr. Davidson that they're still a nonprofit so it's probably more cost effective for them because they don't have calipers and all those other, other overheads correct. that come along with city. So so that's that's the struggle of this is is we fully recognize with you the expense that could be incurred if they were full time staff. I personally believe I would like them to be full time staff, but we went with the thoughts here and I think the city manager also agreed with you that it would be more cost effective this way, and so that is what went into the model. Um, because they're a contractor, we obviously, again, I want to make it clear, we can't fully control their work that way. So we can't specifically set their right. hours heavily. We can't tell them where they're going to work. We can 
devise a scope of services and a work plan, um, we could potentially say, you know, we, we want you to work at least 40 hours a week for us, but we can't necessarily say you're always going to be there from 8 to 5. So um, our attorneys are adv continuing to advise us on this, and we will be utilizing our consultant services agreement with whoever these people are. They will be required to follow all rules and laws related to contracting. They will have a 1099. They will have to get a business license. Um, and we recognize that that could be onerous for some folks, but that is the model that has been proposed. Okay. Uh, is there concern then with that subcontractor then digressing into other products? I mean, essentially, uh, they are their own business. They would have autonomy to take on other clients and to not give their full concerted efforts to Morro Bay. The, you're going to run that risk with anybody you hire for anything related to a contract. And so um, they're a contractor. If they don't perform, then we're going to get rid of them. And um, that's how it works. We expect them, if they're going to work on our behalf to do this, that they're going to put in their full effort. Um, and that's kind of how it works. We'll, you would be reviewing that as the TBID board under this model. You would be reviewing their performance. You will help us devise metrics and measures that we can use to compare how they're doing and see how they're doing. And we'll, we'll go from there. Okay. Thank you. Joan, questions for Sam? I do. I just want to be clear first on, on this. So uh, I've pulled some information together on contractor versus non-contracted employee. We own, everyone up here owns a small business, and so we deal with contractors versus non-contractors consistently. And it, for small business owners, is a slippery slope. There are multiple reasons why the IRS does not like you to necessarily hire somebody as a con... The words contract employee completely contradict each other. Contract employee does not exist in the mindset of the government of the IRS. You're either a contractor or you're an employee. You're the right hand or you're the left hand. The two hands are not conjoined. So, you know, and, and they, they shake as an employer may hire a contractor to complete a specific task, um, but an independent contractor, even looking it up on the SBA, an independent contractor operates under a business name, has his or her own employees, maintains separate business checking accounts, advertises his or her business services, invoices for work completed, has more than one client, has their own tools and sets their own hours and keeps their own business records. So I just want to be very clear that if we're... The, the way that it's kind of set up now, well, it's set up very similar to San Luis Obispo County where there's a nonprofit destination marketing organization that's hired a full-time employee with the specific purpose of um, working full-time, you know, 50 hours a week, 40 to 50 hours a week marketing Morro Bay. If we hire a contractor, they're set to do the task and, and don't necessarily have to find additional things that can create a volume of tourism, an additional volume of t tourism for Morro Bay. Um, so that's a concern that I have. Um, but the question that I have is regarding the accounting and the legal. I'm a little conflicted in terms of, and, and I was looking at this last night, so I did meet with you yesterday and I had a lot of questions, but I'm a little conflicted on the accounting and legal because I'm not sure how a contractor who's an independent contractor would be legally permitted to use the city attorney and the city accounting services as a taxpayer. As a taxpayer, I'm curious, you know, is that even legal for a private business to be utilizing those services? Or am I misunderstanding that? And you can explain that better to me. The short answer is that based on legal advice, yes, that's allowed. And we do that currently with the water reclamation facility project. We have a, we have a contracted professional, not an employee, who has a firm and is working on that project for us. They utilize our accounting services and our legal services for that project. And so we, we have evidence and, and precedent to, to do that. How much, how much do you know off the top of your head how much money that contract is for with them? It's very large. It's very large. Much larger than what we're talking about here. Very large, yes. Yeah. So I can see why the city would want to delve into that. But for a contractor of this scale, 
I'm, I'm not sure that that's necessarily the best setup, but we'll to, have to, be, to see. Sorry, I'm sorry. I, I want to draw a distinction. Are you talking, when we talk about utilizing accounting services, we, we, we are talking about specifically as it relates to TBIT assessment funds. So we're very comfortable utilizing the city's internal accounting services to manage the assessment funds to, to help with expenditures and revenues and track all of that. Um, if it's this private contractor's personal books, they're not gonna, we're not going to use the city for that, nor would we allow them to use the city attorney for their personal issues. It's going to be related specifically to the TBID. Great. That was what I wanted to know. And okay. that's what I was I trying to get in that. clarification. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, wait a second. Because it looks vague in there, as if, okay, so once we hire a contractor, this contractor is going to have everything run through the city. How's that legal? That was my question. Um, and let's see. Can you explain again how you picked a $300,000 figure? Because a $300,000 figure is roughly one-third of what the assessment district um, budget was this year. So I'm wondering how that kind of one-third figure was selected. And that $300,000 figure shows up under section number five. Sure. So uh, previously, the last staff report outlined how we got to that figure in the calculation. Um, this is the PISMA model for how they put place TOT into the into tourism promotions and marketing. And what they did, um, I want to say it was 2010 is their benchmark. Um, they took whatever their 2010 level of TOT was at the time, and they said, we're going to place 10% of our TOT collections up to that benchmark into tourism promotions and marketing. And so that is the model that we utilize as well. We said, based on the 2014 collection, which was about 2.9 something, we rounded up to three. And we said 10% is $300,000, and we will ramp up to that over a five-year period. Okay. Thank you. And um, let's see here. Going back to the original staff report, I was looking at that and um, was brought the original staff report. One moment, please. The original staff report dated September 16th. I, I just want to, and this is just a clerical in terms of, in terms of making sure all the information is in. Um, in terms uh, on the first, second, third page of that staff report, page three at the top, it reads specifically MBMC Morro Bay Municipal Code section 3.60.030, good heavens, states, and then it, it quotes, and in italicized, it, in italics it reads, the purpose of forming the district as a business improvement area under the Parking and Business Improvement Area Law of 1989 is to provide revenue to defray the cost of services, activities, and programs promoting tourism, which will benefit the operators of hotels in the district through the promotion of scenic, recreational, cultural, and other attractions in the district as a tourist destination, end quote. But that's not the end of the quote. The actual munici municipal code goes on for a bit longer. And it says, uh, the quote needs to be opened back up and the information needs to be included. It says, it is the intent of this chapter to provide a supplemental source of funding for the promotion of, tour of tourism in the district. And that would be the end quote. So I know that was probably just accidentally you know, copied and pasted incorrectly. So I just wanted to make sure that that was included in there before um, we move on, because it's important information for folks, I think just general in the public, to understand the entire picture of, of that. And I know it's details, but I'm the detail. I'm detail-oriented. I can't help it. So those are my questions and concerns for now, and I'll wait um, for comments and as we move forward with a a plan or whatever we're going to do. So for the record, I'd like to note that Taylor Newton showed up at um, 8.45, so he is here um, on our board. And then, um, Todd, I'll go ahead and go to you. Do you have any questions regarding the report that Sam has provided? So I'm looking at all these uh, bullet points here on this resolution, whereas, whereas, whereas. Um, and it looks like the big thing is the, uh, the savings of the uh, $30,000 for the administration fees. That could be... Uh, turn back into tourism dollars. 
you basically you're wondering what is the be the monetary benefit of doing mm -hmm. this and mm -hmm. yeah i think a big one there is the cutting down on administrative costs kind of reducing some of that and helping the city's budget do that so part of it is we want to make sure we're the city is actually putting skin in the game of this this is our biggest economic engine and so it's putting in that three hundred thousand dollars. It's helping with those administrative costs. But the uh, um, the savings you're listing in here to the TBID board would be twenty five to thirty thousand dollars for the administrative, administrative costs. Aspect, correct. Okay, so I'm looking at the uh, spreadsheet that Joan gave us at the last meeting, and uh, it looks like a fiscal year in 2014 to fiscal year in 2015, uh, we went up ninety grand already. Um, and it looks like the uh, $30,000 savings that you're proposing would only be about 3.5% of our budget. So your overall administrative cost is about $200,000. Uh, so you would save us 30. 30, That's what correct. You're saving? Okay, thank yeah. you. So thank we're trying you. to reduce some of that administrative overhead. Okay. Um, the city wants to have skin in the game. Why don't they already have skin in the game? Was that a question of me, Todd? Yes. Okay. It's just a general statement. <laughs> you were looking that way, so I just That's just sure. a general statement. So, okay. So, um, Taylor stated at the last meeting that, uh, you know, you kind of had to put on his, his T-bid hat. And I really had to put on my T-bid hat um, in the last couple of weeks, looking at all this information here, looking at the numbers. Um, it seems that uh, before the T-bid existed, there, there was... Uh, not really any ongoing advertising. There was a voluntary committee um, through the city with an outside advertising agency. Am I correct on that, Joan? Okay, so that's the uh, model you're promoting that we go back to. And if that model was, uh, was successful in the beginning, it would still be in existence. Um, the town wasn't as busy as it could be, and if uh, the town isn't busy, with hotel stays, that means visitors aren't here, visitors aren't staying here. That means that all businesses lose, and inherently all residents lose. Just like Mr. Alexander stated, TOT definitely helps general revenue. This board is helping each citizen of this, of this city. Um, the hoteliers, they realized that there was a void, that, uh, that something could be done, and they did it. The hoteliers created a T-bid, which is a 501c organization, we exist. Um, the TBID board is autonomous and it's successful. Um, just looking at the uh, TOT um, collected in the city from the beginning back to July of uh, 2010, I mean July 2009, fiscal year 2010, uh, TOT collected was 1.5 million. And last year, ending uh, June of 2015, um, 2.4 million. So there's an additional 900,000, almost a million dollars additional going into the city from this volunteer organization that exists. So really quick, uh, board member Basson, just let me clarify, that's not accurate what you're saying. And so I'll just make sure I, you have the background and please correct me if I'm wrong, anyone up on the board. The T-bid itself was created by the city of Marl Bay. Understandable. Bay. Okay. I'm talking about the, the people the, who are here sitting in front of you that you're addressing right now. Yeah. The people that came before me and this, this, the whole board's existence. And, so and this board right here is a city of Morrow Bay advisory board. You yes. answer to the city council of Morrow Bay. You are we not, that. You are not independent. You we understand answer that. to the city council. Okay. What you're actually talking about is the Morrow Bay Tourism Bureau. Okay. Um, that is the separate 501c6 organization. Okay. Um, th these are two separate entities. It's okay. a little bit confusing because of that, and we've been talking about that for a while now, about how we can address that. Um, but what we're talking about here today is the city's tourism promotions and marketing. Mm -hmm. um, right now, we contract for those services with the Tourism Bureau. So the city, this is the city's endeavor. We are taking these community TBIT assessment funds collected by the hotel your community and we are then contracting with the Bureau to enact all of the tourism promotions and marketing. So that is what it's been since um, 2013, technically. They made the decision in 2012 and it started 2013, correct? So, so just for the history purposes, that's correct. Um, please continue. I just want to make sure that's accurate for the people maybe listening at home as well. Okay. Thank you. Um, well, with all this advertising dollars that the TBID creates, 
Um, we have the ability, the city has the ability to advertise Morro Bay to, to the world. Um, and if we get people to come here, and if we get people to stay here, the hotels win. People stay. Um, the TOT wins. Businesses win. Residents win. As uh, there's also more sales tax generated for the city, and there's there's more money in it uh, in the general fund. Um, TBID wins because we have more hotel stays. So then TBID inherently goes up, uh, and then TBID can even advertise more. So it's an entire upside for all if this is uh, going successful. Um, all the track records here that I see show that uh, the current model for the, the TBID is a success. Um, everybody is already winning. Um, in fact, we were up just 10% in revenue in October alone. Uh, uh, the city's talking about possibly if the numbers and the growth are expected um, to put uh, $300,000 uh, into the TBIT advertising budget. The city's proposing to put $300,000 into tourism operations, and we would work with the TBIT advisory board to determine the appropriate way to expend that funding through the annual report and work plan. And that's a five-year estimate for that 300000 Based on, pro on the projection we did with 8% year-over-year increases in TOT, we would get to that number in five years. Okay, so it looks like at the last five years, TOT has already gone up $300,000. Yes. More than that. Correct. Okay, so we're doing fine without you, it seems. Not to be, so as far as I'm reading the numbers here, you would this, prefer this seems not to, to have be a success. city funding. No, I'm saying we don't need it. We're, do, we're, we're oh. already excelling. City funding would be great. If, w why isn't it already existing? That's, that's kind of my question. Because past city leaders made a decision to pull it back. And the current city staff and the current city leaders, well, I would say the current city staff right now believes that this is our most important economic engine, and it's crucial that we make a commitment and show that commitment to this economic engine for the city. I just want to say one thing. Current city council it has dropped money out of this board. Correct. So current city That's council. That's why I pulled it back to city staff. This is a city okay. staff proposal. This right. is just not Just for clarification, because you had made a comment that the previous city council pulled funding from this board. It actually was current city council. Correct. I just want that clarified. Yes, thank you. Sorry. And another one of the bullet points in here says, uh, for expediency purposes, you would want to give the uh, uh, $125,000 budget to make uh, immediate uh, approvals uh, without TBID board um, advice. Uh, we're all in-town people who can be reached by the phone, so I don't understand the expediency uh, part of that. Plus, if the city wants to budget that already, um, without having to go through this, this resolution, that, why doesn't that already exist if he has some, I'm, some existing budget? I actually budget? am unclear what is being discussed. I think he's talking about, if you don't mind me interrupting, is he, I think he's talking about, there had been a comment about city has the right to spend up to 125000 without going through. Correct. That's what uh, I think he's talking about. The, there's been concern with um, the bureaucracy of municipal government that we would be too slow to respond to um, important opportunities to promote Morro Bay. And so what we've tried to explain is that once the city council adopts the annual report and work plan, um, which is devised by the TBID board and the expert tourism staff, the city manager has the authority to enact that and carry out those policies, procedures, and, and the budget. Um, the city manager, so people, people have thought that we'd always have to go to the council for approval of expenditures, and it's not true. What we've tried to explain is that the city manager, uh, for co construction projects, he has up to $175,000. For other projects, he has up to $125,000 he can go sign contracts on without having to go to the council. So it's a, it's a, it's a measure of efficiency. And that exists already? Correct. Okay. Um, also, if the city wants to increase uh, TOT, I also agree that the uh, vacation rentals um, should be part of the T bid. Uh, I think all fixed lodging um, should be considered fixed lodging. I understand the uh, the trailer parks; they have to compete against the uh, the state parks that are kind of exempt from that. So I would understand their their. Uh, their point on that, but uh, all the Airbnbs and the VRBOs and the vacation houses, uh, if the TBID money advertises Morro Bay, people come to Morro Bay that 
that doesn't automatically necessarily mean that they're going to stay at a hotel. Um, so the TBID funding that goes out to advertising, I believe that uh, all the vacation rentals and the um, Airbnbs are, are gleaning some upside from that. So I think they should, they should uh, have some skin in the game as well. And uh, according to Jones' uh, figures, that would throw in um, almost $80,000 a year right there. And I'm curious to see uh, what other members have other questions. Thank you. Taylor, I know you just arrived, and so you missed Sam's report, but do you have any questions for Sam? Um, do you mean to get you up to I, I read the, the report that was sent to me last week, and the resolution, <clears throat> um, the where, I, I was calling it myself, I was calling it the whereas resolution. Um, but... Uh, I don't have any questions for Sam. I've prepared a, a statement of my opinion on all this, so I'm ready for to do that at any time. Um, you let me know when it's time to do that. Okay. Uh, what we're doing right now is asking questions on staff report, so we will come back to that. Um, J Joan, I know, had one other question. Yeah, two. Sorry, I, I met with Sam, so I asked him all my questions, but I do like to get them on the public so the public understands yeah, what, what the mode of thinking is. So while they're repetitive and I'm asking for a response, I appreciate you humoring that. Um, one of the questions that I have, um, and I think this is important because people need to understand the process and the difference between an ordinance the law, an ordinance, and the resolution. Um, so it, I, we had this conversation yesterday, Sam, um, regarding the resolution. And um, will the resolution, the next step, and, and so I know the answer to this, but I'm going to ask you. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. The next step in the life of the resolution, is that for the resolution to be moved to an ordinance? No. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, if I may expand on that, however. You may. Yeah. <laughs> That's, yeah, go ahead. Is that, so obviously resolutions are declarative statements, and they help guide policy, provide, provide information. Ordinances are typically longstanding and controlling, and typically are the way that you would um, either codify something through the municipal code or amend the municipal code. So um, Chapter 3.6 of the Morrow Bay Municipal Code is related to the TBID. If we wanted to modify that, it would have to be an ordinance. We're not proposing to modify the existing law for the, for the TBID. It's a great law. It really protects the hotelier stake, uh, stakeholder community. Um, what we're doing through the resolution is providing the guiding framework for how we will then manage the, the overall TBID. Um, in, were the city council to adopt this or another proposed resolution, um, then what will happen is that city staff will operate under that resolution until a future time when it may be changed. Uh, the exact way that we would operate were uh, there to be an ordinance or a section of the municipal code, and we would operate under that until also that could be changed. All three of those things can be changed at literally any meeting of the city council at any time. That's how the law works. And so it comes down to uh, who the elected officials are, what they think about issues, who their constituencies are, um, w the special interests who have a, a passion for something or an interest in something, um, who come to them and provide them with feedback. And um, that's, that's governance. And so... And the reason, why, the reason why I asked that question for the new board members is because for uh, the dinosaurs on the board... <laughs> <laughs> which would be Michelle and me, um, for the dinosaurs on the board, we've sat through basically three city councils. Yeah. So we've seen with city councils this pendulum tick all the way from one side all the way to the other, and the pendulum is swinging back again. And so I just I want to be clear that the resolution, and this is my next question, is the resolution binding? The resolution is binding on the city, on the city staff to carry out this policy. But the resolution can be changed at any time. Just as an ordinance good, yes. Correct. So the, res the resolution doesn't lock this in for Ever. eternity. The a next city council, whether it's the same one reelected or whatever, what, whoever, whomever, may at some point, or staff could come forward with a different idea of how this could look in six months. And... This could happen again, so or a conversation like this could occur again. Just is what I could, should this say. This was an ordinance, right? So I just want to be very clear that this is not necessarily a forever thing. Just, just to be very clear, and then just to be clear, because I think every one of us has asked this. 
Even under another model, the city could, could be contributing general fund money to tourism, correct? Do you mean right now? Under any model. Yes, absolutely. We Under should be. any model, yes. they could be contributing absolutely. funding, general fund money. Yep. And they have in the past. Mm -hmm. And they contribute general fund money currently, $50,000 to the visitor center, which serves, I would say, uh, the visitor experience in Morro Bay, which, which fulfills on the visitor experience in Morro Bay. That, that would be how I would call it. Fulfills on the experience, gives them places to go, ideas of things to do in Morro Bay when they arrive here. It helps them fulfill their experience. So that is general fund money, $50,000 of general fund money. I would, I'm pretty comfortable saying that all of us would agree that it's um, likely a pretty good, I, well, I wouldn't say all of us would agree. I would say all of us would likely think that at some point it's a good idea for a visitor to experience some type of visitor service fulfillment while they're in Morro Bay. Whether that's electronic or direct face-to-face -face interaction, some of us would probably have different opinions on that. But the fact of the matter is, I think we all believe that the, the visitor Fulfillment experience belongs to the city of Morro Bay, so we appreciate that $50,000 of funding on it. Um, and, and I want to let everybody know that there is some general fund money going to the visitor experience in terms of that. Correct? Okay. So that was my, my two things. Um, I don't have any questions. Thank you, Sam, for your staff report. I appreciate it and for the board's input. So I think what I'm hearing now, I, I do want us to be mindful of the time because we've had a lot of meetings this month. So I think, um, can I maybe just straw a poll on where we're at with the current resolution in front of us? Um, and just kind of get a little idea of do we want to, you know, maybe everybody agrees with the resolution. I'm not seeing that. Um, but do we want to straw poll that and then move forward on what we're going to move to next? Um, sounds like a plan. Does that sound like okay? Yes. Um, okay, so if we just go around the board, just kind of go around, I'm just going to stop. start at the end. The current resolution that's in front of us, do we want to tackle that, Aaron? M Michelle, really yeah. quick, if I could, um, excuse me, Madam Chairperson. It, it might be more, even more efficient rather than doing that, just say, is anyone in favor of passing okay. that resolution? Okay. And you can do that faster. through general consent, which is parliamentary okay. procedure. Um, thank you, Sam. That's why I love you being at these meetings to help. Yeah. Um, so do we all generally agree with the resolution before us? I'm going to say no. I'll start off. I am not in favor of the current resolution in front of us. As presented to us, I, I would agree with you. Okay. Boys. Um, I, my, my answer is no, but I have reason. But you have discussion. Yeah, okay. So I just want to make sure on that one, because then that way, because for all I know, everybody agrees with it, and we move forward, and we're out of here in five minutes. But um, Todd? Uh, no. Okay. Okay, yeah. so and moving into that, let's... Okay. Oh, and Aaron. I thought I asked Aaron first. Sorry, Aaron. No, no, I, I do uh, not agree with the current resolution in front of us. I think it is an uh, interesting framework for us to move forward to dial down better and create an optimal model to really grow things. So we're, we're getting close, um, but there's, I think, discussion that really needs to be had. Okay, so that being said, I'm going to start with two cents, and then I'm going to go for discussion. What I... And maybe this is a question and comment kind of, I might be a question. If we're going out to a contractor, why couldn't we contract with the Morro Bay Tourism Bureau and fix the contract between the two? The short answer is that the city council has asked us to bring them an alternative model. The current model is the contract with the Morro Bay Tourism Bureau, so we brought them an alternative, which is not the Tourism Bureau. Okay, fair enough. So that being said, I think we'll go into discussion. Um, I have two cents on that comment, but I'll um, start with, um, do we want to start with, are you ready? I'm going to start with Taylor since you were, yeah, you seem like it. So I'm starting with you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so I've thought a lot about this and I've been thinking a lot about this because we've been discussing it for a long time. Um, it seems to me over six months. Um, and I'm fully aware that today I'm wearing my TBID hat and that my boss is the city council. Um, that being said, th who I'm speaking to ultimately is the city council. And I have friends on the city council who I respect and I have faith in. So that being said, I want to give them my opinion on what we've been discussing for so long. 
and spent so much time on. I know that the time I give doesn't cost the city anything because I do this for free. But I know that the staff's time does cost us all money. And there's a lot of things in this city that I would like to see the staff working on. And I have discussed that at past meetings. I don't feel like today is the time to bring those back up. Um, so what I wanted to start with is, this is what I want to say to city council. When I started getting involved with politics um, back in 2010, 2009, um, I had a great moment with uh, former Park and Rec director Joe Woods, and he explained to me what city council, what the city organization and the municipality was all about and how it worked. And he explained to me that the most important thing for me to realize was that the one thing that doesn't change is city staff and how that's permanent. And after all is said and done, I'm still here and he's not. And the city councils that I've seen pass by have changed and I'm still here and my business continues to excel. And what I want that to mean to you is this. I'm, in the, I'm a businessman. I, my name's Taylor Newton, and I come from a long line of American capitalists, going all the way back to the American West, frontiersmen. And I am successful at what I do. I know that city council is represented by a, a lot of really intelligent people, but besides Noah Smuckler, um, who has the landscaping business, none of them are really in the business world. And there's a lot of things about their direction that I, I'm really impressed with. But like I was saying with my reference to Joe Woods, the city council isn't permanent and neither is the staff. But the locals, the businesses here in Morro Bay, the hoteliers, the people who own businesses, we're permanent. Because as the shirt I'm wearing shows you, I have local pride. I live here. At the end of the day, when I shut the door at my business, I live next to Spencer's, right here. Okay, so I think I made my point with that. Um, going back to what we're talking about, this resolution, I, I totally think that there's some great points that have been made in this resolution, like the savings that we could have administration costs as far as the legal and um, accounting. I, I think those are really good points, very valid and strong. But the, from the bigger picture, and because I'm a businessman, that's where I start at, is the bigger picture. Because at the end of the day, if I don't look at the bigger picture and it fails, my kids don't get fed. You know what I mean? I'm not getting paid regardless, like city staff. Um, okay, so what I wanted to point out was that, okay, <laughs> I'm fired up, sorry. Um, the executive direction of the tourism and all this, um, it's really important for our city. I think that's very clearly stated in the resolution. Tourism is so important. So, being so important, we need to have it represented and moved forward and advised and directed by people who are really invested in it. And I think that's who you have. That's why we're in the state that we are, is because those people are so invested. I had the statement last one of our recent meetings, which has been a lot, and it's been weighing heavily on my shoulders, um, that... The people in the Morro Bay Tourism Bureau are motivated to succeed because their businesses depend on it. One of my problems with this resolution that keeps on going back to a, a fat, something that's wrong in this process right now is that I keep on get, getting the response to why are we discussing this? Like, for example, last Thursday we had a change in the meeting for the Morro Bay Tourism Bureau because we didn't have time in the previous meeting. And I was here, and my spouse went to the hospital that morning and almost died. But I was here, working for free. Um, and my business is, gosh, you know, the homeless are getting kicked out of the creeks, and I've got people losing their minds right now. But I'm here. Okay? So don't take me for granted. And what I want to point out with this is that I keep on asking people, why are we talking about this? Why are we making all these changes if we're so successful? And they keep bringing up these words. Um, 
G6 or 6G because of resolution 6G. So when I go to my wife and I say, hey, you know, is that a good enough reason? Just these words, 6G, just a resolution, 6G. That doesn't mean anything to me. It's these, this number, this, it's, it's frustrating that that's the reason. I, I, I read it all, and what the council's asking is for options. We've given them one option. The one option's been given, and I don't understand why we, I feel like there should be options, and I felt like, I feel like the staff has come up with some really good points, and they have to, because that's their job. They're working for city council, too. And I'm proud of them for coming up with these options, and I'm proud of Sam for how much he's worked on this, and how it's, I mean, I know that this isn't easy, man, and I know that you're working really hard, and I respect it, and you being here and what you've done is so valuable for this. But at the same time, when we're talking about 6G and options, I, the person that I've heard the most options from is Joan Solu, who now isn't going to be on the T-bed after she gets done here in January. And we lost Jack Smith last time because he's too busy with his real business. And like I've already said, like, I'm doing the best I can being here. Okay? Now, let's talk about tourism and bureaucracy. I want to ask you guys a question. And these are what are called rhetorical questions because I'm not really looking for an answer. Okay, so my question is to city council. How many of you own businesses in Morro Bay? That's a rhetorical question. I think you understand why. Um, in t with tourism, how many members of city council are, are in the business of tourism that feeds their family? Or how many people in the staff of Morro Bay are really in the business of tourism to feed their families? Okay, how many people on city council or on city staff are in the business of events to feed their family? On this one, I'd like to point out my personal experience. I've worked Amgen for three years. I've worked Sunset Saver, not this last year, but the previous three years. I've worked Avila Beach Golf Resort for four years. I've worked Pozo Saloon. I've worked all of these events. And like I said, I'm up here giving you my time for free. I'm valuable. I'm an asset. Okay, local pride. Morro Bay, in this county, Part of the reason I'm here and I built my businesses here is because of our local pride, what we're proud of. We're proud of this garden city. This city is a gem. It is a pearl in an oyster. And people come from, very, very wealthy, famous people come here to vacation and relax. Our tourism industry is going to be here regardless of what we do because we're phenomenal. So the business of promoting that can be done very wisely, and we will continue to grow no matter what happens with our economy. That's my belief. Bureaucracy. Um, I agree that bureaucracy can slow things down. And I've been watching this last six months to see what happens with the bureaucracy. Is, are we going to be able to speed things up with our tourism if we were to change to this model? I've been open-minded about this. I really have. I had a test for everybody. My test was the visitor center. I warned you that it was, I was calling your bluff. And I did, from my point of view. I felt like the, what the city did with the visitor center was a fail. And moving it to the Chamber of Commerce is a fail. And why was it a fail? The fail was because the original resolution to have the visitor center in the form it was, was about location. They changed it in order to help the Chamber of Commerce. But that doesn't change why we originally formed it the way it was. And if people in the power of city council or staff can't see that, they're not ready to run the Tourism Bureau. Because the visitor center was very important. Yes, it's important to the hoteliers. That was a bluff. Yes, it's important to the city. And it needed to be where it was for all the reasons that we researched and spent money on it originally. I was here. I was here. I know why. I went to the city council. When Noah Smuckler was all alone up here, I was here. So I feel like I've given you 
all that I have to say. And I, and, I, and I totally think that a lot of the stuff in this resolution is valid, but I think that to push it forward and make these changes just because of 6G it shows the inadequacy of the city council's ability to see where tourism, the business of tourism is really about. And I'm not saying that Morro Bay Tourism Bureau needs to be exactly as it is, or TBID needs to be, it's more about Morro Bay Tourism Bureau, I think, not about TBID. But I think that changes could be made, and I think that you've made a good point that like we can develop this, but to just jump forward and say that, okay, here we are, Resolution 6G, it's all done, this is the option that we need to go with, let's pass it. No, I disagree. This is so important that that's not okay. And I've given you my time to this city and to the people and to city council and my friends and bad idea. And look at the visitor center. That is a small example of how this bad, this is a bad idea and you need to think about this better. And that's all I have to say. Thank you, Taylor. I always love the passion on this board. We all speak so much from our hearts, so I appreciate that. Um, Todd, can you follow that one up? Are you ready? <laughs> That's a tough act to follow. I'm just going to leave that one right there. <laughs> um, Aaron? I'll try to keep it brief, and no, I do, cannot even begin to follow Taylor's passion on that. Um, Sam, I've spent a lot of time in your offices at lunches with you and with the city manager, David Buckingham. Frankly, you guys get tourism, and I believe in both of you and the direction that you would want to take things. Um, the bottom line, though, is that even though this is a resolution, we have to treat this document as though it may continue on into perpetuity and take it very, very seriously. Um, I'm getting up to speed with all these things right here, but as we get history lessons from the other board members, we do realize the city has been uh, not great about tourism and basically to bring them one step closer to directly managing those funds. I do realize it is their funds, but they look upon the board and the Morbay Tourism Bureau for sort of the expert management. Um, the track record isn't great. And while you and Dave are here now, we don't know what the future will hold with you guys. So we have to treat this as though it'll be under an entirely new city council, an entirely new city staff management. And frankly, we have a model that works very well right now. There don't seem to be any metrics that are lacking to really bring forth this argument. Um, I appreciate that it could save our administrative cost up to $30,000, uh, but as you know, Todd pointed out, that, that is kind of a drop in the bucket there. And um, frankly, and as I speak to other hoteliers, the question comes up, if it ain't broke, why are we fixing it? Um, I'm very new to this board right now, but I know that, and actually, before I joined the board, sitting out in the audience here, this has been a, a very long, arduous um, topic. It looks like it will probably continue on, and my concern is that it's really distracting from the big picture, which is tourism. And under the current model, now, excuse me, I'm not advocating maintaining the current model. Your resolution here has some very good points. Um, the fact, Sam, that you and uh, Mr. Buckingham are advocating for contributing general city funds up to the $300,000, I'm thinking actually we could do better than that shows you're putting your money where your mouth is. You are advocating for your single greatest asset that we have here, which is tourism, and that's phenomenal. But the administration of that, I think is something we could drill down on a little greater. While this has been a long ongoing discussion, the overall logistics feel a bit rushed. So I'll put myself in your shoes right now. You're sitting here, you drafted the initial staff report and kind of the overall discussion on how to bring about a new model and Immediately, the hotelier said, if you have an employee, it's going to cause CalPERS and all these additional costs. So you responded to our objection. You said, okay, let's go to a subcontractor. So now you're sitting here feeling we're playing the gotcha game and explaining all the reasons why a subcontractor won't work, Sam. And you feel like you can't get it right. And I, I empathize with you. I sincerely do, because we tell you the employee won't work, and now the subcontractor won't work, and you're wondering, oh my God, how do we solve this? And I think that just speaks to the issue that we need to not rush this process. This is our greatest asset for this town. We need to really put together a solid structure for how this will be handled moving forward. Um, earlier in this meeting, I asked you the subcontractor questions, and there's definitely some holes in that, but we can patch that up possibly. Uh, the employee model definitely has its downsides as well. So maybe we need to drill down to that in a little greater detail. 
So that's what I'm saying. The resolution here that you put forth, I think it's a great framework. It really is. But there's some things that we need to discuss in a little greater detail. Um, my understanding is that this is it for the discussion, and then city council wants to vote on this in January. And I, I think on behalf of all the hoteliers, don't see what that tremendous rush is. This new model is not refined. There's possibly some other greater things we could do. Um, there has been discussion, is it, would it be more efficient to put together, say, a subcommittee of city council, perhaps in a subcommittee of T board members, to kind of work out those details and then bring those up forth to the public? Um, I don't know. I'm just throwing out ideas here on a way to create the optimal model for all parties. Because let's face it, we are in this together. We all win together and we all could possibly lose together. So, but at the end of this, I do want to stress, Sam, I really value your input. You're put in an odd, a really bad place here. No matter what you say, it feels like it cannot be right. And I do think that uh, Dave Buckingham really has tourism as the best intentions for town. My concern is future generations to come. As Taylor said, um, he's here, he will continue to be here. I was born in this county, I will die in this county. We are really here, we are in this for the long haul, and we need to think about that down the line. So that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thanks, Aaron. John? Well, thanks, gentlemen, so far for all your comments. I appreciate it. I appreciate, Sam, your efforts and your ability to be flexible on meeting times. I'm under a little bit of pressure at my business right now, which, you know, I continue to put myself under. <laughs> and um, and um, I appreciate you moving around your schedule to be flexible to uh, meet with me yesterday. Um, one, one question that continues to come up that I, I agree with, I think practically everyone has brought up, you know, G6, G6, where did it come from? It, um, in June, when you came forward, uh, to, uh, was it June that you came into the first uh, Tourism Bureau meeting? And kind of, it was a very casual conversation. You know, we're looking at Gold G6. Okay, we'll talk later. <laughs> you know, I mean, it wasn't exactly like that, but it was, you know, Gold G6 has been directed to staff, and we need to really look at this, and we're going to be moving forward with, with checking things out. And we're like, oh, okay. Um, and so now here we are in December, which is we're right at a six-month point. You know, we work under a governmental system where we have the Brown Act and, and whatnot, so we can't get big groups of us together to kind of really delve into discussion points um, to, to understand how, you know, I can't understand how Todd is feeling if I'm working with Michelle and Aaron. I can't go to Jane. And so, really, these, these meetings are, are time for open discussion and really to just get all that out there. And sometimes I think that system can be frustrating, and so I think that sometimes comes out in our, our very passionate ways, especially on this board. You know, where tourism and everything is kind of big and fun, and when it's not big and fun, you know, there's a saying in our business, which is, nothing really matters if the guest doesn't see it. So it, no matter what the emergency is, no matter what the problem is, no matter what the issue is, as long as the guest doesn't know it, everything's fine. So it's kind of like my grandmother saying, just don't air your dirty laundry. Well, sometimes, you know, that, that frustration, you know, we've been guilty of that on our board of, of airing our frustrations with how that pendulum that we talked about earlier swings. So your efforts to kind of bring that pendulum to the middle, I do appreciate that. And that's where I'm going with that part of the conversation. Um, I, uh, I did have, you did answer a question for us that we didn't bring up, and Gold G6 was mentioned here a couple of times. And one of the questions was management, that, that came up through a management partner's, um, through a management partner's recommendation. Through an organizational study by a management partner's. Yes. Organization. They recommended placing it under the umbrella of the city, and then the, then, then the city council also adopted Goal 6G. So they're two separate things. Right. They got advice from these organizational management folks, and then the council said, Please look into this. Okay, great. So, and the question that I had asked at our last meeting, I want to let um, the public know that Sam actually answered it to the full board in an email. I don't, I, I hope you all, oops, excuse me. I hope you all saw that. The question I had was, um, there was a question about management partners and the recommendation that the city have an econo economic de development 
a function with tourism under that umbrella. The question was whether the folks, and I use that word quite a bit so we know it was me, and management partners are experts in economic development, specifically with a tourism focus. And the response from management partners, um, Sam was very, very kind to get a full quote from them and feed it back to us. And it was, we indeed have several people with economic development experience at management partners, but our recommendation is not based on their advice as this was not an economic development study. The team members making the recommendations in our report are generalists. And we looked at the city through the lens of best practices and local government management. Based on interviews and our discussions with staff, we felt the city should have more control over how TOT, and as I recall, a bid two was being used. We felt the city could get more bang for the buck with a uh, concerted effort focused on economic development of the business district that included the hotels but was not focused solely on them. So the response was, a, um, I think, a solid response, but also um, I, I think for me, it, it just showed that they didn't have somebody who was specific in tourism that was relating that information into the report. Um, so it answered my, the question in a very general way. I just wanted to put that answer back out there because Sam was kind to go um, reach out to them and, and get an answer. Um, as we move forward, I'm really looking for a solution for our board because I can tell you that listening to Mr. Davidson speak earlier and speak, I mean, I can't go to Albertsons right now or the farmer's market without somebody stopping me to talk to me for 10 minutes about this topic. What's going on? What's happening? You know, you can't, you, you got to put your sunglasses and a hat on on the beach to get a, a good brisk walk and <laughs> so you don't get stopped right now. So I, I, I don't want to be incognito anymore. I want us to make a decision. Um, so I, I want to see us move forward with a recommendation to the city. Because even hearing Mr. Davidson speak today, you know, he said, I, I believe, and I'm paraphrasing him, he said something to the effect of he believes that the city is moving forward in this direction. And from most people that I spoke to, having, you know, they have had conversations with folks in the city, whether that's city staff or city council or whatever, they've, and they, they believe firmly that this is already moving forward. So in terms of that, you know, there, there is a vote coming in January, and we will see where the city council sits on this. Um, but I also believe strongly that I think that the city council really believes in the staff. I think um, they've hired the staff, and they feel very comfortable with recommendations that the staff is putting forward. And so they will likely really strongly take into advisement the city staff's position on this. So I, I think my, my personal opinion is that if we can craft something together here today where we can make some recommendations, we're uncomfortable. It was clear with how this is presented. But I think we can bring some things back. Um, I've written some notes. And I've written some notes on what you all have said. And if, if you can turn to the resolution, I'm going to move through it very quickly. In the third, whereas. I can. One moment, please. I'm a hotelier, I'm an organizer. This is like your folio, guys. So let's follow along the folio so I can explain all the, your tax ramifications and how you spent your money at the hotel. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, uh, let's see here. Um, I have a red line version, hang on, that I wrote notes all over while we were going through. Yep, okay, I've got the right one. Okay, so on the third whereas, I just would like to see us, um, Sam and I discussed the whole employee versus staff versus contractor. I still am, I, I just, I'm a little uncomfortable with the word staff. I heard, Sam, that you're changing that to professionals. Am I correct in that? 
Correct. So I had proposed to modify number two to say experts and professionals, and instead of saying the staff, it would just say they shall be contractors, and then in number three, instead of employee, professional. Okay, so I wanted to, uh, I um, also was concerned about, concerned about that, and we had had that conversation. I would like to see us uh, say in there, and I don't know if the board will agree, but you can see that um, I wrote, um, as well as contracted for said services with the Destination Marketing Organiza Organization, Morro Bay Tourism Bureau, with full-time professional tourism staff dedicated to marketing and promoting the city of Morro Bay. That's the structure we currently work under. So I, I just wanted all the information included. And then as we go down, we move to the now, therefore, be it resolved by the city council of the city of Morro Bay, with California, as follows. And I... I st struck the word directly because it, it actually wouldn't be, uh, and, and this board can correct me if you think I'm wrong, but I didn't feel like it was directly marketing if it was contracted out. So I just struck the word directly. I, I know they want to be in charge of the marketing, but it's going to be marketing through a contractor. But I understand if you want to leave that in there, it's just semantics. The city shall directly manage its tourism promotions. I, I guess they would be directly doing that through a contractor, but... I just wanted that for consideration because I'm not sure if it if it's directly or not. It's up up to the board to see what they think. Board member, so really quick, I am. Um, I think the reason why you did that took it out is to, because you want to make sure it's clear that they will be contracting, right? And so I think it is good for you to take that out. So I think you're on the right track for the intent of your proposal. Right. So okay, and then uh, expert. Ex and again, the board, board. I really want to hear your input. So, um, expert tourism contractor reporting, and I struck staff and put in contractor, but I understand we'd be using the word professional, but I, I still think contractor makes it more clear. Um, and then this contractor shall, instead of will, be required to follow rules, shall be required to follow all rules. Um, and I know there's, it's kind of semantics in terms of will and shall, but isn't shall more binding? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, the TBIT advisory, uh, number three, the TBIT advisory board shall participate in the annual review of the city's tourism contractor, and then replacing con uh, employee with contractor again. Under number four, um, there, there is no change listed there, but uh, one of you mentioned um, mentioned that uh, some, you mentioned something there about uh, give this give to the destination. I'll come back to that. Under number five, I know Sam, you'll probably shake in your boots when you see this one, but <laughs> you're like, oh, you're shrugging over there. Says the city shall commit three hundred thousand dollars. Sam and I had this conversation yesterday. I put $500,000 in here, and why did I put $500,000 in? You guys are all like knocking your knees together. I put $500,000 in because our current budget is about $900,000 for the assessment district. And I look at this and I say, they're willing to put in over six years one third of our current budget. But the assessment district, as Todd pointed out, just like TOT, under their plan will grow to about 1.45 million in the next six years to 1.5 million, a million and a half dollars. If they're willing to put in a third over six years, the number at the end of six years would be $500,000 locked in. It's, it's a numbers semantic. So that's where I put the $500,000 number in. So, right, so exactly. Taylor just said a third is actually 500000 not 300000 And I know that's a big number. I can see staff over there going, oh, my gosh. But, again... I'm indifferent. Uh, I'm sorry? <laughs> I'm indifferent. It's okay. Staff this is, is your proposal, so this is important to, to get it uh, it's out It's important so. to discuss the reasons why. Uh, I completely understand what your, what your proposal is. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I mean, it's about the success of it. And with that's continued right. success, that it would mean more money. So fully, fully get it. Okay, great. Thank you. And, and I know yesterday, you know, we talked about that a little bit more in depth, but just, just to get that there. Number six, the city's professional tourism contractor shall be offered, I fixed that on mine, space in the city, blah, 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 building, facility. Um, seven, I wrote free of charge, but then Sam said outside of the TBID assessment funds, so could we add either free of charge or outside of the TBID assessment funds 
to the end of that, just to be very clear that that would not be charged back to the TBIT assessment funds. I just want to put that in there for your consideration. Um, number eight, um, in order and and I. In order to transition to direct management of tourism operations, the city, and I struck does not, and put an S on intend, to extend a new, deeply revised contract with MBTB, and then we move down to this, uh, it continues on the city council resolution, and it has some numbers, Roman numerals. Uh, the city will coordinate a transition plan to direct management of the contractor, which shall have a full-time professional employee dedicated to the marketing and promotion of tourism for the tourism industry in Morro Bay and include this resolution in the contract with the contractor. So this resolution, because it's not necessarily it's binding for the staff to act out on, for city staff, but then this resolution would become binding for the contractor to act out on. And I think that's important because then it ties the contractor really tightly to city staff and the city staff oversight. Um, um, and then number nine, uh, I, I added in there the city's professional tourism contractor shall advise on shall advise on the administration of the visitor center for the city of Morro Bay. That doesn't mean they run it. That means they advise on it. Um, on on and and uh, now I know there's a current contract. Sam and I talked about that, and I wasn't sure how to necessarily word this properly in terms of that doesn't mean that the contractor gets canceled. That doesn't mean that anything happens to the chamber with their contract with the city for, for visitor center services. What that means is that there's a structure where the advice of the person who is marketing to get those guests into this community, where the visitor center is fulfilling on their experience, is able to advise that visitor center on some things on how to tie all the pieces together that Taylor really, I think, strongly voiced his opinion about. So I don't know how to word that one. I, I would need probably some help with that from all of you and probably staff. Um, and then uh, number 10. Sorry, board member. Yes. Um, it, it's, it ends with and may. Should we strike that part? Well, I don't know how to end it. Oh, okay. <laughs> and may I'll think, I'll and think may that. work with the contractor and may I, I wasn't sure. You almost I could just leave it at the city's professional tourism contractor shall advise on administration of the community visitor center for the city of Marble Bay. Period. Oh, okay. All right. Well, I had it and I thought too much about it. Then I guess <laughs> so I overthought it. Okay. So um, and then number ten, the city. And I should have struck two. The city shall work with the local business. This was important to me yesterday. And Sam, thank you. He understands. The city shall work with local business community on the formation of additional business improvement districts that include, I struck the word could, that include retail and restaurant, recreation and property businesses for the purpose of enhanced marketing of those businesses that help make Morro Bay the destination it, that it is. The additional business improvement districts shall be voted on by January 2018. It gives city staff a goal, sorry city staff, it would give city staff, if adopted by city council, a goal to work diligently on those business improvement districts for the betterment of Morro Bay, including a property improvement district, which doesn't necessarily mean marketing. It could mean beautification, which we saw in correspondence from Mr. Heath was important to him. He felt that, uh, well, not only him, but other folks, all, a lot of residents, including myself, feel that beautification of the city is part of our quality of life here. And we do live in a garden, but beautification and, you know, walking, I remember walking with my 95-year-old grandmother up Morro Bay Boulevard, and she got tired in front of the theater, and there wasn't a bench. And I had my baby on my back and my baby in a stroller, and I, I was trying to help her along. And I understand his plea for benches. It's not the purview of the T-bid funds, but it could be the purview of 
of a property bid. Um, additionally, uh, uh, Member Baston mentioned vacation rentals, RV parks, and, and um, campgrounds, I believe. And I didn't include that in here because it was a miss on my part. So if the board wanted to include that in here, we, we could add that. Um, I wrote it down, but I didn't, I wrote it down from his comments. Um, so I'm trying to come, I believe that if we don't put something forward, the city council is going to vote on this resolution as is. I really do think that giving them a solution moves us forward, moves them forward, um, moves staff forward because they feel like they're, you know, kind of right there, and we're so close, right? We're so close, but we feel like we're so far away. Um, and, and it allows, it would allow for a full-time employee to continue. This would be a full-time full -time employment, full, it's job creation, which, you know, we're business people, we're big on that. Um, it, it, it would allow for a full-time, which is what the city partners, business partners, all of our business partners, as we went through all of those workshops three and a half, four years ago, really want to see a full-time person dedicated to this. And I think it's shown results. And I think with a, a proposal where we work together, we can get it. We can continue. Even Chuck Davidson said that's extremely important to the success of Visit Slow County is for them to have an FTE working here as a director of tourism moving things forward. That's my proposal. Beat me up or don't. I'm willing to take it. Sam, I know you've... Yeah, I, I, I had two, two questions to make sure I understand. Um, so um, board member Solu, on that last one on 10, when you talk about um, could it... or that include retail, restaurant, recreation, and property. Can you define property businesses? I want to make sure I can understand that and translate it to council. Sure. So well, uh, can I use an example of downtown, for example? Sure. So downtown, uh, there was a great article, I don't know if you saw it two days ago in the Tribune, um, uh, talking about Santa Barbara's downtown. Um, I would suggest that everyone look online to the Tribune and look at what they talk about. They talk about the retail sector and the leaseholds in downtown segment um, and how uh, the city doesn't control them because it's not a shopping mall. It's not controlled by one person. They're controlled by individual property owners, which is a frustration of their chamber of commerce and their city as they have kind of ping-ponging businesses down there. But they are trying to get their property owners together um, and, and do something, and they, the, the, you've, I have the article still, I'll try and scan it for everyone, send it to you. Um, in any case, a, a property business improvement district could be levied on property owners, especially those that do not reside, uh, I've heard from the business community down there that most of the owners, while I don't know factually, because I've never looked at the property tax records, do not reside in Morro Bay. So the businesses largely feel that those owners have no skin in the game on improving the landscape of the downtown. And I don't mean plants. I mean the business storefront landscape um, and interior landscape. And they put it back on the individual business and whatnot. Um, so a, a property bid could uh, be used for general improvements to, um, I guess, to improve the, the look and feel and, and, and scale and scope of downtown. Does that make sense? It does. Can I play, in devil's, general terms? Yes. Can I play devil's advocate with you on this part for just a second to see if I can Absolutely. get the word could back in there for this reason? Um, so if we, what's going to happen, obviously, as you are business owners, you fully acknowledge this, that we're going to, if we place an assessment on them to do that, which I think is a great idea, <laughs> they're going to put that then on their customer, which is the retail shop owner who also is now going to be part of a bid, who's also going to be putting something out. So potentially what we're going to have is that retail person is going to pass on their cost from the property bid person as well as their assessment onto the, the customer. Maybe that's fine, but... I think it would be good to have more discussion about this in the future as we work to formulate the bid overall. So I just want to advocate for the word could going back in there so that we can have a, a healthy community conversation later. 
um, about the, the best way to build that bid. Um, maybe, maybe the, because my, my concern is that we're going to have retailers coming to us later freaking out, going like, why would you do that to me? Because I'm going to have to pass it on and then I already have a bid. And I just, I think it would be good to have more conversation about later. And the word could doesn't, it gives us the, it, for me, it's flexibility. Okay. But it's up to you. I just want to give okay. you guys that. No, thought. I understand. That's why you're. Okay. You the know. second, the second question I have, and I, I think this is really important moving forward for when we, well, let's be, I'm going to one that's going to bring this to council. So I need to make sure that I understand the intent of this, mm -hmm. what I see in this. And, and let me make sure it's clear. I, this is, thank you so much for doing this. We talked about it yesterday and I said, I'm pretty confident you're not going to do this. Here's what you could do. Write, write me something and let's, let's talk about it tomorrow. So thank you so much for doing this. This is fantastic. Um, and I want to make sure it's clear that I'm not opposing this or anything. My job here is to be neutral and translate and make sure I can explain it for the council. What I see in this is that the contractor that we're working with just remains the tourism barrel. Is that accurate? Because I want to make sure I just say that in the, in the staff report. You know, but it, we're strengthening what you're, what you're trying to do is strengthen. You want to strengthen the contract We'll continue to work with them as the contractor. Obviously, you have the full-time staff. Right, but, okay. but I want to go back to a statement that's in the, the whereas, which I think changes the relationship in terms of function, functionality. And that is, I'm sorry, I have to find it. Forgive me. Uh, where is it about the, the bylaws? Can you help me out, someone? Isn't there something in here about the I don't remember the TBIT advisory board shall have enhanced duties? Aha. Uh -huh. That's uh, sorry. Not in the whereas's. No, uh, Number four. Um, That'd be point four in the resolution. Yeah, point four in the resolution. Goals, metrics. Nope. I'm looking for the one. I thought there was. I read this and I read. Is this about the annual review of the tourism professional? No, it's not. What I was trying to do, basically, is there, there was a statement about advising um, activities, programs, benefit the district, advises tourists. I, I don't know. I should have highlighted it. Um, so let's go to four. The advisory board shall have enhanced duties that include not only the general tourism. And maybe you made this in comment, and I'm not seeing it, it read. Uh, tourism marketing and promotions, but any efforts to enhance the moral bay as it relates to tourism. This can include citywide brand management. The advisory board shall assist staff in developing the overall duties of the board and will make recommendations to city council in order to update the advisory body's bylaws as appropriate. As those bylaws are updated, I think that what could happen, I, I didn't know how to word this, what could happen through that is that the bylaws of the tourism bureau completely change, and rather than all of the business that we do taking place in a tourism bureau meeting, which I think is clunky for the city staff and for the city council because it feels to the city staff and the city council, although we believe it's mirrored, it feels to them like they're removed from the process. And in order to get city staff and city council back in process and, and to get us back into their process, I, I, it would be my advice that through, and I don't know how to word it, so I would look for help from the board, it would be my advice that all of the business takes place as a TBID board body and that the, 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 the contract which allows for the Tourism Bureau to exist, the, the bylaws that allow for the Tourism Bureau to exist change and that there be two meetings a year for the Tourism Bureau or four meetings a year just uh, either budget-wise or uh, review-wise and update-wise um, to keep the mechanism alive that allows this community to have what it's so long wanted, which is a full-time director of tourism employed in our community working on our behalf. And I think that it could be tightened in the other direction to narrow the scope and the meetings of the bureau and expand the scope and the meetings of the bid board, but I don't know how to word that. Okay. So um, I'm hearing you. Thank you. So the answer is yes, we would keep the bureau. And you and I talked about this yesterday in terms of it is confusing to people sometimes. Are they operating as the T-bid? Are they operating as the bureau? And you've seen public comment from people and it's like, no one can figure it out. And, and what, what I've been concerned about it too, and it's just like, why don't we just have all the business at the T-bid meeting? If it's about expending the money that is TBID funds, let's do it as a TBID. 
have the tur tourism bureau just do its own business. So you know now in this model, what we still have here is the T bid board, which is the city's board, still has annual review for this professional. So you, I don't know if you still want that in there because it's a little bit. Now you have a city body reviewing your staff. Because what I envision in my head now is your tourism bureau has your four meetings or, or whatever a year. One of those meetings is your private meeting related to your staff. They're not our staff, you know, they're your staff as the bureau because we're contracting with you. Under this, this still retains the contract and model with the bureau. Um, but, does that, does that excuse me, but could the, could through the process, through uh -huh. the revision, could the city advisor or appointee who, uh, I think it says the city manager or their designee, the city manager or their designee could be placed into the language of the, the bylaws that allows for that to happen. So you're, are you saying that you would like, what you're proposing is that the city manager or the designee, whether it's my position or another position in the future, would have more input over the bureau staff? Would have, uh, would be, uh, when, I, when I first moved here, the, city manager and the fire chief were on the Harbor Festival board. Mm -hmm. They weren't, they didn't just come to one meeting and advise on how, what the street closures should be. They were on the board. You're suggesting that that person maybe be on the bureau board. Correct. Okay. If that allows um, us to have a full-time employee working here. And, uh, and the way the Bureau is set up right now, for day-to-day -day operations, just so you know, I'm not sure if the public is even aware of this, and th we've discussed this in public, but I'll bring it up again. The way the Bureau is set up right now, the advisory body, may, the Bureau board, which is the advisory body, makes decisions, and uh, I should say, makes budgetary decisions and creates a work plan and staff carries out the work plan. Professional tourism staff carries out the work plan. Day-to-day -day operations, professional tourism staff answers directly to the chair and the vice chair. That's how it's written into, um, into the employment offer. Um, that, could, that could change and add the city. So direct tourism staff, direct the, the professional tourism staff to day-to-day -day operations answer directly to the chair and the city advisor jointly. I, it, it's city designee, I'm sorry. City designee jointly. It, it, it ju I just don't know how to word that in there. I'm sorry, guys, that that part is taking so long, but I just don't No, know this is a good discussion. That. Thank you so much. I think, so uh, section two, where you talk about expert tourism contractor reporting the city manager that are designated will manage the city's promotions and marketing, that's probably the section where we want to put something like that in there. Section and two? Section two, because that's where we talk about okay. that kind of uh, I'm off on management relationship. That or couldn't that be in the contract also? <laughs> I, uh, well, well I, if you're also you're also making this commitment mm -hmm. to the city, okay, right? I right. So put it in. Here. What you guys are doing is a counteroffer, right? Right. Yeah. And so in your counteroffer, you're trying to make a commitment to find some balance and inclusion. Yeah. And I think section two is a good way to do that. Where perfect because the the previous section two was about how the expert tourism staff will answer to the city manager or their designee, and now what you're saying is, well, the expert tourism staff is still bureau staff, but the city has something there some teeth, right? And so exactly. we got to figure out the wording there and when let's so let's I think you guys probably have discussion about that, but I just I think it's a good section for it. Okay, perfect. I need help with wording. Okay, so, so the concept being and just I'm okay, once again playing thanks. catch up here as is Todd down there on the end, I'm sure. Okay, so Moore Bay Tourism Bureau currently the staff at the Moore Bay Tourism Bureau reports to the chair and the vice chair of the T bid, right? For day to day operations. For day to day operations. Okay. So is what so is what Joan's advocating then is to maybe remove the vice chair and put a city designee in that seat so that more Bay Tourism Bureau staff would report to the chair of the TBID and a city designee. I would add, I would leave chair and vice chair because if the chair is unavailable, they have to answer to the vice okay. chair. And then I would add, I would just add, just add. city designee. Because, you know, and I, I know we're kind of in discussion, so, Correct. you know, I agree there needs to be more connection of the dots. I've said that. I, yeah. you know, obviously, there's, there's some missing things. I really feel like if we can go with a system like this and come up with giving it in, in one year, let's ask, you know, I'd love two years, but let's try to be um, open. Let us try to work with the current system we're in and tighten everything up. 
in that year and see if this will work before we just disband the bureau. Mm -hmm. We have all, you know, to go to an outside contractor that's not dedicated to Morro Bay has me as a hotelier extremely concerned. Yes. As does and I think us. all the other hoteliers. And yeah. that's where, you know, the feedback to council is like, I welcome the council at the table. I welcome <laughs> Sam at these meetings. I've said a thousand times, if Sam was here the last two or three years, we wouldn't be here now. The reason being is we haven't had great tightening of the belt. So let's look at our contract. Let's figure out what's working to make it work. I have some suggested language for you. Uh, okay, let's suggest hear away. it. Uh-huh. So let me see if this works. Okay, hang on. Let okay. me get my glasses. This is number two. <laughs> I'm going to throw in a few words. Bureau expert tourism contractor reports to the bureau chair and vice chair as well as to the city manager or the, their designee and will manage the city's tourism promotions and marketing. Does that reflect the intent? One more time, please. Yes, please. I'm writing it down. Let me say it. Like, the, the bureau expert tourism contractor reports to the bureau chair and vice chair. So that's a lot, some new language there. So put the bureau in front of expert tourism so the Bureau Expert Tourism Contractor reports to the Bureau Chair and Vice Chair as well as to the City Manager or their designee and will manage the City's tourism promotions and marketing. So what we've done is in our proposal, obviously it's directly managed by the City. The City Manager or their designee is the person that manages that person. In your proposal, we retain the contract with the Bureau, um, but are, you're basically giving more input by the city over that staff. And so that's what I think, in my opinion, the language that I've offered up reflects your intent. So the city manager's yep. designee or the city manager himself or herself Correct. can walk in the room as well and direct more Bay Tourism Bureau staff Hopefully as well. Hopefully what we would do is we'd be able to sit down and A collective effort, and really of course, but then yep. they have a direct voice in the process. Yes. And we're all and essentially we collectively would, working we together. We probably would also update on the deeply revised bureau contract. Right. We would reflect that as well. But this resolution will this resolution signals our intent to revise that contract, to provide some new stuff. And so I think it all works out together. It's just an all in a line. I love it. Good wording, Sam. Thanks. Okay, sorry. Not to get excited. Thank okay, you for that because <laughs> that gets the intent of what I was trying to do and likely in a better place than the bylaws. Sure. And I want to make sure that whatever you guys bring to council is very clear because this is an important discussion for them to have. Mm-hmm. So I, 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 and I'll, I'm happy. I'll take this and I'll write it up and it'll be part of the staff report, obviously. I so, can send you what um, I in a Word document. I was going to say, we have it here in a Word document just okay. as what's presented. Um, if you want, I can go through and just add that in real quick in red and then shoot it off to the full board and to Sam. Yeah, once, once you vote on it, if this is what right, you Right, exactly. To do. Just saying as we move forward here. So if there's any other changes... The full board, yeah. Because I don't, I just, you know, put, if you guys don't like this, I understand. So don't be, feel anything like that. Okay, so do you have anything else, Joan, on your, on this resolution? Before no, I and, move and I, uh, uh, and no, but I appreciate um, you all working through. Is that uh, 2018 goal? How is that 2018 goal at the very end? It gives two years. We formed our me? bid. We formed our bid in a year. You're, you're wondering how, what I think about that. Yeah, because think, you'll uh, likely your economic development guy, right? It'll well, likely uh, turn into work for you. Mr. Graves pointed out I was giving myself three years. So, and but in my head, I had two the whole time. So I think it's fine. Oh okay. well. <laughs> okay. So, good. so for the record, then you're, you think that January of 2018 would be sufficient? Basically, two years. I think so. Okay. And instead of saying RV. Um, Vaca- do you guys want to add RV vacation rental in there? I wasn't sure. Can I just yes. get a consensus of yes or no? Yes, I, I, I think you should because I think that you're they giving do. them a full picture. Question for you. Are you wanting to have them as part of the new bid or your current bid? I think that's up to them. Okay, because I know that you, you've proposed in the past to um, actually modify the existing bid to the, the 94 law? If they, correct. And so that's an opportunity to modify it to include them as well. Well, maybe we should include that as language in here. So I'm, that's why I mentioned it. <laughs> Let me look at that while we all discuss everything. But if, if, if we were interested in changing to the 94 law and doing a five-year, which is less volatile than a one-year, um, than, and less volatile for the hoteliers and less volatile for the city as well in terms of planning. Um, if we wanted to make a recommendation, yeah, it would be under that 
area to move to the 94 law. So think about that as we go along. Um, but um, regard, I'm, I'm sorry, Michelle. Um, no, okay, so um, everybody's got the resolution. Jo Joan just went through it all. I think what I'd like to do now is go into discussion on what we have been presented by Joan. Um, and then let's, if we want to make any changes, now's the time to make them. Taylor, I'm going to go ahead and go to you because you're right there, anxious. Yeah, I, I think that what Sam and Joan have done is exactly what we should, I mean, I think that it's our best option. I think that we have to present something, we have to move forward, and I think that having you two develop this and involve a full picture like we are is definitely the best plan of action. It's our only way to proceed forward correctly, I feel. That's good. Perfect. Todd? Um, with me, it seems there's, there's more um, uh, working parts of this current setup that are working. Um, it doesn't seem that uh, a lot of the bullet points really need to exist. Uh, I think having Sam as a city liaison is great. I think having uh, the city council actually be involved in tourism is great. Um, I think everybody uh, realizes that Morro Bay is, is tourism dependent. Uh, what I, I don't see as a, as a new member is the, um, the false expediency that, that seems to exist. We want to we wanna vote by this particular date. Um, I understand having a, a benchmark so everybody you know, has a little fire under them to, to get the discussion moving. Uh, and we are moving the discussion and we are having discussion and that is, that is great and we're um, finessing the language and I think long term there can be uh, a benefit for all parties involved. It just uh, seems to me that, okay, we have to have this by, by January to vote on it. And I understand you're working under city council's behalf and, uh, and request. And uh, we are here giving you our feedback. And uh, I feel that uh, if, if we're not maybe done finessing the language and, and fine toothing everything here uh, that perhaps a city council could recognize that we are doing some work and we are moving forward and possibly not have to vote on this on the January meeting. It seems that uh, uh, there just seems to be a, a false expediency when we all want to do this right the first time. Two, two things really quick. Yeah. Um, I want to make sure it's really clear that we're, whatever you vote on today, we're going to bring to the city council, but we are still going to bring the staff version because m I have a boss who's going to tell me to do that. So I want to make sure that's clear, but that's good because, as Taylor noted, options. So there's going to be, there will be two options. Um, the second part, in terms of, I've heard two people today say, why are we doing this so quickly? And, I, and it's the two new people, unfortunately. And I think that's part, probably part of the reason why. I mean, we've been working on this literally since June. There's, this is not a rushed process whatsoever. Six months is, very, is quite long. Um, the, but the reason why January, um, one, we were actually going to vote on this in November. We've pushed it back two more months because we wanted to make sure the board had more input. So I'm so appreciative of that. But... January is so that we can make sure we start working on the transition. That's, that's the biggest part of it. Um, we need the ability to make sure that we get through the process going through legal to, to ensure everything works well, the contracting process, et cetera, should they choose the, the model that staff proposed. So that's why. We, we, we don't want to wait until May because that's when the contract's up. So it gives us five months to work on fi finally solidifying it all so that we flip a switch and we're ready to go. That's, that's the reason why. It's, I promise you we're not trying to rush you through it. We've been working for six months on this. Um, yeah. Fair enough. Okay. Um, anything else, Todd? No. Aaron, hmm? any comments you want to make on the resolution or any other further comments before we potentially, I hope, get a, um, someone to make a motion on this? Right. Uh I do understand, Sam, and thank you for clarifying the timelines. It has been six months in the process. In some ways, I think a lot of us would like to wrap this up so we can get back to business. This could have been uh, two hours and 10 minutes right now of discussing tourism and branding and how to get through the off season. What are we doing next summer? There's a lot of important issues. So um, I personally feel that uh, Jones 
alterations to the resolution that you presented to us is a fantastic compromise. Actually, rather than saying compromise, that, Im that implies adversarial bodies. I would say I think this is just moving towards just the best possible design for the city of Moore Bay and tourism. We are not adversaries. We all want exactly the same goal here. We're all just basically throwing our ideas in a pot. Let's stir it together and pull out the best concept. Um, I am in full support of this document right now with the alterations that Joan had made as well as the ones, the small alterations we made today. So I'm good with this. Let's move forward. Joan, any other comments? Or before I make a comment, I've, I've been quiet today. <laughs> you are a quiet girl. Are you under the weather? No. Uh, okay. Wow. <laughs> Just checking. Uh, uh, quiet, I know her so well, sick. I can ask her that, right? Um, yeah, I, I, and I, yeah, right. So, um, um, uh, I would like to see us add to the very end, uh, which is number, I'm sorry, Number 10, it's the new number 10. Uh, the city shall work, sorry, excuse me, the city shall work with the local business community on the formation of an additional mm -hmm. business improvement district that could, we add, we add, add back good. could, we add back could. could include retail and restaurant recreation, RV, Uh, campground, vacation rental, and property businesses for the purpose of enhanced marketing of those businesses that help make Morro Bay the destination that it is. And additionally, move the current Morro Bay T bid into a five-year 1994 act. Prior to that, it's so and additionally, move the current Morro Bay Hotel Motel Lodging Business Improvement District from the 1989 act to the 1994 act. Does that make sense, Sam? Yeah, I think you were good by saying and additionally move the current T-bid from the 1989 to the 1994. To the 1994 Act, okay. The, and, I, and I would clear that it's the Business Highway Act, blah, 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 blah. You would. Yeah. Clear that. So I'll add the specific title of the Act to make sure oh, it's Thank clear. you. Um, the additional business improvement districts and or changes shall be voted on by January 2018. Does that make sense? Okay. So yeah, yes. does that make sense to the board? Just to see if that makes sense to the board? Yes. Okay. Todd? Got it. Are yep. you okay, okay with that? Any oh. other, anything else, Joan, before I make two comments real quick? No, go ahead. Okay. So first off, I, um, I haven't really commented at all day today. I've been very quiet. No. Taylor's taken all the passion for the day. Um, you know, I just want to kind of reiterate how important it is. I think that we all want to find solutions to this. I think it's really important that, um, you know, we understand staff has spent hours and hours working through this and spending countless times with all the hoteliers, and I appreciate all of that time. And um, we all just want a solution. And, you know, I want to really point out to what Taylor said, because I've lived this, um, over my tenure here in Morro Bay since 1992, so however many years that is, I have seen a lot of city staff, a lot of city councils, and a lot of different things get moved pendulum to pendulum. And the, the one thing that um, has been so important to me over this time, you know, I'd love to back out of the TBID someday. And part of the reason I'd, when I'd, I'd like to do that when I see sustainability. And one thing that um, I think is important is to create some sustainability and to create a, a, a working engine. And when, when we were in the older TBID and we did not have a destination marketing organization and we were not nonprofit, it did not feel sustainable because it was all a lot on the volunteers. We're all volunteer board. And now we have city help and that's great. We have city that says, hey, we want to be a partner. We want to get in there. But they've said that in the past and never actually fulfilled that. So I get we're in a new day today and Sam's been around for six months and it's been incredibly different. And I I, I bless 
whoever I need to bless for bringing this all working together. So, but I do still get concerned with that sustainability, which is why for me, having a contract with a Mora Bay Tourism Bureau destination marketing organization, to me that's sustainable. Because if the city were to turn around tomorrow and say, you know what, we don't care about tourism anymore, which I don't see them doing that. But if we get a new council in a year or two or whenever elections are, sorry, I'm not political, I don't know when they are, that could change again. But that destination marketing organization is still in existence and it's still there and it's still a pumping engine. Um, you know, and, and there's always ways to get from point A to point B. It's how you drive, you know, what car I drive is different than what car Joan drives. We all drive something different, but we all want to get to point A to point B. So I think that's why for me, this is, I won't lie, it is personal. That's why I get passionate because I have seen the pendulum swing back and forth so many times. I want sustainability for tourism in Morro Bay. I want to put, as Taylor pointed out, my, I literally feed my kids off of how well Morro Bay does. I mean, I literally, that is my salary is paid from the customers that come in this door. It's that simple. Um, that's why I get so passionate up here. It's why I get so frustrated. Um, and like Joan says, we can't always talk together. So when we get all together, we get excited because we can talk about it. So, um, you know, I think we all want what's best. The council wants what's best. You know, the board wants what's best. I know Sam knows what's best. I will personally guarantee to the board, to the community, to everybody, if we can keep the contract with the Bureau, I will do everything I can to make sure the city is involved as chair, mm -hmm. as while I'm current chair, and have as much transparency and open-mindedness as possible. Um, I know sometimes I get a little grumpy up here because I get passionate, but I am very open-minded and I do want to see this be successful for everybody. Um, I've said this many times, I don't want this to be the Newport Beach, the Huntington Beach, the Skyrock. I want Morro Bay to be what Morro Bay is because that's why people come here. We come here because we're locals. People come here because they love that we're still old school. That is precious and that needs to not change. So I think, um, I hope the city will hear loud and clear, please don't change this for change. Let's look with the current model that we have and let's just make it better. We can do better. The city needs us and we need them. This is a partnership that works both ways. Um, and there's a lot of things around the city that I do think can be done better. And we need to get the city on the table for that too. Um, I just don't wanna see us go back to being a full T-bid and going back to not having. If we go back to a contractor, I will be extremely sad because I, I lived three years of those contractor days where we did not have dedicated full staff. We had age, ad agencies and we had different ad agencies and we had different you know things that were good and bad. There were some good things that came out of those, but I don't think, I mean, like she, we know our DMO, our Morro Bay Tourism spends so many hours pounding the pavement and working hard. I was down to go see Joan yesterday in Barcadero Inn and I see Aaron running down the street. You know, I mean, he's literally running down the street to get stuff. So, you know, I don't want to see that all go away just because of lack of communication and just because we haven't had a chance to let it work. I would encourage the city council and all of the, no matter what decisions happen, give it a year. Let's see if we can make this work and make it more efficiently. Um, I think with Sam at the table now, there is feedback back and forth. And I think that this can be developed stronger. What is it the city council wants? Maybe we turn around and get a subcommittee together with the council, you know, two council members to sit down and tell us specifically what they're wanting from us. You know, if they ask us to jump 50 feet, we jump 50 feet. I mean, it's not that hard. I don't like the games we've kind of played back and forth. I think there's been a lot of that over the years. And I think we need to be a little more blunt. And that's why I appreciate Sam just honesty. Hey, come out, tell it as it is. Um, I'm a very honest person, tell it as it is person. So I think that will work. And I, I don't want to see the bureaus. We have so much momentum going. I don't want to see the momentum stopped. And I really am going to, there is no way that if we change, the momentum is going to get shifted. It's just the way it is. Anytime you do change, momentum stops. It's just fact. So I don't want to see that happen. I think we can move in the current cycle with what it is. Um, and I love the idea, I want to back in, that the T-bid should be meeting every month and it should be the T-bid. I think the community is very confused about that. And so I do think it's important that we put back the T-bid roles and understand that. Obviously, the Bureau has always been every month. We've been on live on TV, but I think it needs to get reversed. I think people think, oh, excuse me. Yeah, I think you're right. I think people think the Bureau governs the T-bid. They don't understand that the T-bid governs the Bureau. Yeah, or I, something. I, Whatever, something there's like some that. confusion you know, out there, and we need to get rid of the confusion. Right there's a good example. Yeah. Te technically, the contract says the t Tourism Bureau manages our T-bid for us. Right. And so that's what's confusing. Yeah. It manages the funds. It doesn't manage the T-bid. It actually says it manages the T-bid. 
Yeah. See, and, 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 and that's where some legal, you know, I'm an operations gal. I'm not a legal gal. I just know how to operate from day to day and get and move the needle. And I don't want to see us get stuck in bureaucracy because we can't, let's just move the needle because we all know, I know my owner, if I'm in, if I'm in black and I'm not in red, I don't hear from him. So, you know, we need to be, it's true. I mean, if I'm doing my job and I'm making money, he doesn't have anything to say. So we, I think it's the same in this instance. We need to just do our job and we need to get back on focusing on tourism. I think the county is a great example. They are structured just as we are, and it's efficient and it works. And I think we need to, you know, they did a lot of research, believe me. County advisor? I'm asking, my microphone is not, I believe they have a county advisor to their board, um, but I'm not sure. They I think do. Nikki Isn't it Nikki is their Schmidt? county advisor. No. no. They, oh, okay. they have a county so they advisor. do, and that's why they, you know they also have a like a city management kind of oversight group too of like the city managers, right? So you know, and those are some ideas that I would welcome. Um, you know, if there's some input on that. An advisory group. They have no, yeah, they, but they have no say. They they don't get jurisdiction. The board members all get the jurisdiction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So and 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 I would love to have some input from city council and advice, you know, give, tell us what we're not doing and we're happy to do it, I think is what I'm trying to say. Or better yet, give us a great idea. Yeah. Give us some, somebody throw an idea at us, anybody. Yeah. So I, I do it think um, it's really important that we not try to rush into a change because other cities in our county are doing something. I think we need to, let's be the leaders. Let's be the ones that set precedent. And, you know, the numbers speak for themselves. I mean, you look at the numbers we've turned, and I know everyone wants to say, oh, it was the economy. Well, I'm sorry, you got up and downs. and I mean, those numbers go back for a long time. So you can't put that all on the economy. You can't. I, I'm, that is factually, you cannot do it. Um, so I, I just encourage um, council because I know you're watching all of this. You know, we want to work with you. We, we really are out to try to make what works. Um, I know for me personally, I do not want to see us work backwards. I lived in those days. I don't want to be back in those days. And um, I don't think it's going to be moving the needle forward. Yeah, the past cannot be the future. Exactly. And sustainability. We all want sustainability. That's so important to this whole structure. Um, we're going to have DOTs come and go. We love our current staff, but that may change. So, you know, I don't want to sit here every year and have to be finding a new director of tourism or a new contractor, which is what the old days brought. Every year we looked at a new ad agency and every year we had a new ad agency and well, for the last, like the three, the first three years. 20 years Right. Took us 20 years to get an RFP, and then after we get the RFP, every year we changed out agencies um, or contractors. Um, and that, you know, I don't want to go back to those days. They were cumbersome, and they were a lot of volunteer time on our, and we all are volunteers, and we're losing our volunteers. Nobody wants to join our board. They think we spend too much time working. So, um, you know, that's, that's well, not good. That's factual. Yeah, <laughs> I know. We do work hard. Um, but, but we like, play hard and we laugh. Because, you know, it's, it's, it's what we do every day. You know, everybody says to me, why do you do this? And I go, because it's important. Because this is important. The hotelier's voice is important. We're stakeholders. The community's important. We know our customers. I talk to them every day. Um, mm -hmm. And that's important, too. Um, and I agree. I think the visitor center um, was, was a really um, horrible test. And... Um, it's disappointing to see where it is now. Um, I'd love to fix that someday, and we can talk about how to fix that later, but I hope it doesn't stay, I hope it doesn't continue in the, where it's at now, because it's not doing the city or any of the, anybody any good. Um, May I, Madam Chair? Just look I, yeah, I want to be ahead. very clear with the visitor center that we are talking not about their very good professional visitor center staff, but that we are talking strictly issue. about location. Correct. Location, location, Strictly location. about location. We are not talking about the contractor. We are not talking about the wonderful visitor serving staff. I want to be very clear about that. Yeah, no, thank you, Joan, for pointing that, because you're right, staff's done an incredible job. I wanted to be clear that it, it's location and presentation. You know, it's, one, it's location and it's the form of the building as well, you know, I mean, it's not just where the building is, but what the building looks like. It's one of our older buildings, I mean, there's a reason the fire department really wanted to move out into the new fire build department buildings because the building looks old and it's not the most welcoming. Okay, so that being said, I got my rant in because I wanted to rant and I want to get us out of here. So Madam I'd Chair, like to see I have a motion. A motion. Yes. <laughs> Madam Chair, if you'd be so kind, if the motion gets a second and we move forward with it, would you mind polling the board? I think it would be important for the city council to understand how we each vote. Yes, we can Thank definitely you. do that. Um, um, Okay, here's my motion. Um, 
Hmm, I hope it's not clunky, but uh, I, move, I move that the TBID Advisory Board strongly recommend to the City Council that they adopt resolution number XX or 10, 10, 15 or 2015 with the amended changes as proposed by the TBID Board and provided into the official record through writing, which we will provide electronically. Is there a second on that? I, I second that motion. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we've got a motion on the table, and it is the document that everybody's been provided with the few changes that I made. Mm -hmm. Is there any further discussion? No further discussion for me. Okay, so I'm gonna go and I'm gonna poll for vote. Aaron? I vote that this is the ideal document that we've constructed up to this point. I would love to have this presented to City Council. Uh, just for clarification, you have a motion second. All you need to say is yes or no. That's what I thought I was going to yeah. say. Can he just say yay or nay? Oh. Yeah. So new That's to the okay. process. Okay, That's so okay. A, a, a yes. So you're looking for a yes. Absolutely yes. Emphatically yes. Joan. Yes. Taylor. Yes. Todd. Yes. Michelle. Yes. Okay. Motion carries 5-0. Thank you very much. This is a great discussion. <laughs> it was good. I'm glad Taylor got here in time. I am glad too, and I apologize that I did not do my good diligence on reminding everybody that it was an eight o'clock meeting versus a nine I didn't notice till last night myself, so I apologize. I, I just think that you know when we talk about us being volunteers, keeping it at a regular time, 9 a.m. is what I have on my schedule Thursdays. You know, I've opened that hour sure. up. And, and I apologize that too. We, we actually scheduled it at the last meeting. We said, wow, we're here till 12 something. Let's start a day because this could be a long conversation. So that was the reason why we did this one. And we want to make sure you guys had time. So I'm, I am sorry. We should have made sure we reminded you. And I wasn't at the last meeting. So that's why I didn't know it either until like last night when I no, it was, it was our, our November meeting. The oh, TBID okay. meeting that we had in the uh, community center. Oh, okay. That's when we technically scheduled this. None of us put it in our calendars. So, okay. So. I'm so proud of this board for getting us through. Thank you, Sam, for all your time. And I really hope council listens to everything we say. And hopefully we keep working together in the future. Sam, um, can, do you want us to, we should provide this to you electronically? I yeah, have an electronic. Right. Please give me the electronic that I, and I'll compare it to the notes I have to make sure they match up. They match up. Great. We'll okay. do. Okay. So um, do we have any uh, declaration of future agenda items? Anybody would like to state? No. Anybody, boys, down there? Any declaration of future agenda items? No? Okay. Um, that being said, I'll look for a motion to adjourn. So I motioned. All in favor? Or second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion carries. We're adjourned.